recording in progress hello everybody welcome back to the show cody again <laughs> one week you already cody hello peter hi folks hi guys nice to have you yeah. hi yeah. peter how are you I'm here. fine yeah. fine all good here one one was suggesting that it was the best talk we ever had last time with you cody and they said we should do a special yeah. show with every week only with you in it because you have so much knowledge and you know so much about you know about all these old with Bob Swinehart and all this stuff you are so fit in it and people re simply like your wisdom yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of flabbergasted to be honest I mean it's just what I've done you know living you know growing up on a farm and you know picked up a bow when I was real little and mm. it's just I've been it's all I've ever done was hunted with archery equipment and so it's fine <laughs> It yep. got to the point where I wanted to learn more and more and more. And, mm -hmm. and you know, you know how it is, Peter. Like, you you probably know how it is, Armin. You read one thing and then you want to read yep. another book yep. and then you want, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because we talked about books, I found this too. Uh, and this one, you said, David Goes to Greenland mm -hmm. by David Beeney Putnam. And I found today a really nice picture I've never seen. Uh, I seen it in the book, but I forgot about it. Mm. Look, here's Art Young mm -hmm. with with his trapper uh, fringed outfit and is using his side quiver as a back quiver. Mm -hmm. And they they catch uh, an, an, an ice bear alive, mm -hmm. as you mm -hmm. see. Wow. No, he's, he's not alive. There are arrows out. <laughs> you see? Mm -hmm. No. Yes, oh, here are the arrows. Okay. Yes, and uh, he also, here's a famous picture, maybe some will know, with a walrus. Mm -hmm. He shot with his English longbow. Okay. Yeah. And there's another book about this journey. Maybe you don't know, Cody. And it's called, it's from Daniel W. Streeter. And it's called An Arctic Rodeo. And it's... Never heard of that. Check it out. It's it's Cody, Cody, Cody. <laughs> it's also with some stuff with uh, uh at young and about this journey. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting books. Yeah. If yeah. Somebody has time to read, just nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah I, I, it's funny. I enjoy doing. I enjoy reading more than I do looking stuff up on the internet. Mm -hmm. But then again, I do enjoy going on those old newspaper websites and finding old articles from mm -hmm. all the way back into the early 1900s. So. Exactly. Yeah. Which you don't find in books. You know, you need to research differently. Yeah. I found, I don't know if I told you guys, but I found a tre treasure trove a couple of days ago of Art Young and Saxon Pope stuff on one of the newspaper sites. Mm hmm some yeah so once i get all that stuff copied i uh, send you guys a copy of it in email nice. thank you nice nice thank cool. you thank and you. how do how do you get always to these to these flea markets where do you know that these flea markets are and you always find the bow there it's hilarious well i'll be honest with you the the one flea market <laughs> the one flea market's like 10 or 15 miles down the road from me mm -hmm. and i usually get there pretty early you know usually before before everybody else gets there and a lot of the dealers know that i buy archery stuff so okay they keep it for me or mm -hmm. but like this bow here this little herders um the guy who had it for sale he was a new seller or a new flipper or whatever you want to call him mm -hmm. when, I, when i was talking to him and i, I kind of got there a little late and he was telling me he already had like two or three people look at it mm -hmm. and they just looked I didn't put it, sat it back down on the table and walked away. Oh, so I guess maybe it was by luck that I was supposed to have it, you know. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it's. I haven't found anything. I guess too special, like any bear takedowns or mm -hmm. any Grumley bows. But yeah, it's. But then again, I look on the computer though too for like uh, garage sales and estate sales. Mm -hmm. and, you can actually go right on to the websites and type in looking for archery stuff and it will show okay. up all the listings that have archery stuff. Nice. Yep. So. 
because the Americans have a longer history of bow hunting and, and, mm. and the like, so they have the, that stuff in their yeah. garage sales and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah, as we said last time here, you don't find anything. It's very yeah. rarely and then mostly crap. <laughs> Do you guys have you guys have quote unquote antique shops over there? Yeah. Yes, we have. Yeah, yeah. What well, without archery? Yeah. Actually. Without archery. I was in the beginning when I moved to Malta. I was looking in every antique shop, and there are guys. They simply have old stuff, so it's not really antique, but simply old stuff. And I was looking there, old bikes and whatever you, but nothing. No, nothing related with archery thing. Um, Cody, I remember the name of the guy because we spoke about that uh, only horn bows, the, yeah. the, the native Indians, Americans mm -hmm. had. And his name was the Grayson, Mr. Okay. Grayson's collection. He was mm -hmm. a huge collect collector of Native American mm -hmm. Indian bows. And he had this type of, of, of horn only bows. Yeah. A horn yeah. and horn and sinew backed. Yeah. yeah, they are cool. I, I sent you the video. Cause this is such a really cool. They they have this this horn of these whatever animal it is, and then he needs to boil it for four days that it gets soft, and then he straightens it, and then he puts it in in some some kind of mold that it sticks or embraces that it stays straight, and then he files everything and and cuts everything down. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think it was last week at, uh, at, uh, around Tuesday, Tuesday or no, not Tuesday, but Wednesday or Thursday of last week. Mm -hmm. I emailed Lucas Novotny mm -hmm. and I was asking him about how hard it would be to build a um, like a horse bow, but with fiber, just fiberglass and wood. Mm -hmm. and, not, and Lucas said it's a lot harder than what somebody would think it would be. Yep. So I thought about trying it, but. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it, it may be someday down the road it'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's it takes a lot because you need to have the right glue, then you need to have a form, and then they need to be heated up, and and it's it's a lot of hassle. And then you have one form, one shape for one bow, and it's it's really a lot. And, of there, and there's another fact too. Uh, bowers like to tell the people something is very difficult to make mm. <laughs> because. They, yeah, they have so to so say it. They is, can't say, oh, it's very simple. You just do the shit to get and it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't say this. Mm. Yeah. But no, I'm not, but I, I, I appreciate Lucas's, you know, insight yeah. because yeah. <clears throat> like when I met him the first time years ago when he was here in Michigan, like I say, I, I spent all almost all day talking to him and shooting his bows, and I was just blown away by the craftsmanship of his bows or they're yeah. Either bar none, some of the prettiest bows I've ever seen. Yep. <clears throat> and I've never shot one of his true, one of his full on horn bows. And I, I don't know if I'd even dare shoot one. He'd be, he'd probably call me crazy and say, oh, go ahead and shoot it. But just, <laughs> I mean, they're works of art. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. yeah. He makes nice stuff. But he is now in an age, he is looking for someone taking over his business. So. Cody could do it, no? No, I'd have to. I'd have. It, it, I don't think I could learn everything that Lucas knows. I don't think I could learn it all. In yes, you can. Why not? Ask him. Yeah, it just. I would enjoy it, but I just. I, uh, I, I, well, I've seen, you know, these, how these guys build these horn bows, and it's just. <laughs> Think mm. about uh, think about all the John Schultz students. I think mm. they all uh, made a good made good business because they start they say they were they started with John Schultz. Mm. And when when you see Lukas Novotny, he he built I don't know how many thousand bows. He knows everything what you can do wrong, so he yes. gets you directly on the right path. Where you don't make a lot of mistakes, other will make on the way when they build the bows and they did this wrong and this wrong. He knows everything, so that's why I think it's 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 not a very long learning curve. So you can easily only learn how it works. You don't need to learn how it's not working. <laughs> so it's easy. Yep. Well, yeah, it, like you say, Peter, it makes me wonder though. Truly, how many students John Schultz had, though, mm. over his career of building bamboo bows? 
Well, I think quite quite some, no? Mm. Yeah. So uh, what about his his sons? I hear nothing about them, no? Um I do know that his one son, I last I knew last year, his one son was still building boats here and there, but I haven't I haven't heard much of much otherwise mm. i think i think that guy who was with us uh, in idaho john turner he's a professional <clears throat> mountain lion and bear guide <clears throat> a special trained dogs for mountain lions and bears <clears throat> i think he bought the business the leather business that american leather brands mm. you never heard heard about it no i've not heard about the sale but i know american leathers I have a couple of their uh, shooting gloves, and I've had them for years, and they're like, like they're the, top the, the, the Big shot glove, very nice glove. Mm -hmm. I showed yeah. it last time. I think I think they're made out, aren't they made out of elk hide or something like that? Uh, they had two different. One was elk hide and one was buffalo hide. And and they were quite, kind of very nice with this neoprene stretching thing mm -hmm. here. And 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 that that very slick, you know, fabric on the on the finger stores. Mm -hmm. You did a very nice release with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Today, I Cody will love it. Today, I got from my best friend from Tyrol, from Fritz Massinger, who is a bow hunter and a, a gun guy too. He yeah. because I have this little. 22 Magnum Ruger, you see that old one with the little side. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think it's from 1969. And I got two cylinders a 22 Magnum and a 22 uh, oh. long rifle. Yep. And yeah. And he sent me a very nice holster for it with, you see, with this, this, uh, how you call them? Cartridge, uh, I don't know. Yes, it was too long. I cut it down and made here some stitches with with uh, beef. How is it called? B50 bowstring material. Mm -hmm. I use it for sewing leather. <laughs> very nice leather and very mm -hmm. nice made. Yeah. Come on, Barry, show us. Show us. Come on, put it around and stand up. We oh, no, 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. no, no. I, I had it all day long. <laughs> and, and and Millie followed me all day because yeah, this, this, this leather straps are yeah. dangling around and so Millie always yeah. catch them. <laughs> put, put it, just, just put it on, Peter, and do do a quick draw towards the camera, but don't don't discharge a gun in the house. That would be no 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 no. It's unloaded, of course. You, uh -huh. I'm very I'm a lot of safety. Yeah. Now you say that's a Ruger? Yeah, it's an old Ruger that I think they call it a three screw model. And basically, it's a, a clone of the Colt Peacemaker. It also has this one, two, three, four clicks and, and yeah, lovely gun. And shots like in German, we say like poison. Like, yeah. Huh? What do we say in German? Schist wie Gift. No, we don't say that. It's in not Austria, we, in Austria, we see it. It's, it's, it's like an Austrian poison. saying, yeah, but not a German saying. And it and it was longer, but I let it cut down by a rifle maker because I loved it that shorter uh -huh. version because it's more handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Was, um, I I didn't know you guys were allowed to own handguns over there. I thought maybe rifles, but I never knew you guys could personally own pistols. It's, it's difficult. It's not so easy. Yeah. But I got the permit, and uh, I I got a, a permit to own two handguns, and I got another one uh, to carry two. Uh, but it's uh, it's just for hunting. I only I am I'm only allowed to carry them when I'm hunting, mm -hmm. so not in the street or somewhere. Mm. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Very really nice. Yep. Yeah. Now what, what about what about there in Malta, Armin? Are you allowed to own firearms or no? Nothing. 
Yes, Marta, you need to have your gun license and everything, and then still you can't go there and there. So it's a lot of restrictions with guns. Yeah. I mean, you see that we have even the bow, bow more than 60 pounds. If you have a bow more than 60 pounds, you need a gun license for it. How, 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 how do they figure that? It's... But it's still better in, in Cyprus. It's another small island in, in, in the Mediterranean Sea. There, the limit is 30 pounds. Everything more than 30 pounds requires a license. <laughs> so, it's like as, it I, as I told last time, in, in the Netherlands, broadheads are yeah. illegal. Yeah, yeah. This is the, the gun laws are crazy. And even crossbows, more than 60 pounds, you need a license. But what, what are you doing? You, you can have a 50 pound of this pistol crossbow. They so just shoot five meters. So it's boring. That guy in Austria who is making that uh, when you ever when you ever come over Cody or also Armin, we yeah. have to visit that guy. He's making for muse museums all around the world that medieval crossbows. Mm -hmm. And th th those had 1,500 pounds and wow. so on. But they had an arc. Really? <laughs> yes, they had a kind of yeah. winch cranking yeah, yeah, device. Yeah. And in, I, I always thought before, uh, they had steel bows, but mm -hmm. they had composite bows. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. he said, he explained it like that to me, uh, the steel quality was not good enough because mm -hmm. there, were, there were some, you know, some dirt or how you call it inside mm -hmm. the steel, so they mm -hmm. would break. Yeah. And the composite, mm -hmm. they are, I think they are rounded in, at the back. Mm -hmm. And on the belly, they are flat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very powerful bows. Nice. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he's a nice guy. He's making uh, every single inlay and mm -hmm. even the steel work and everything he's making himself. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Andreas Picher is his name. Uh, he's on Facebook. It's very nice. I always like when people have a passion about these things. You know? yeah, <laughs> like yeah, they go yeah. completely deep. I like this. In in real life, he's working for the Austrian police in mm -hmm. the in the ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and 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 but he's known around the world for this uh, mm -hmm. medieval crossbow stuff. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of which, last time you showed one of your Austrian knives. And yeah. somebody was asking where he can get one because he didn't. I thought I posted the link, but I have to recheck mm. it. Okay. You, you guys have pre have have prepared the knife. Yeah, I have a very expensive one today. Wow. It's it's a wow. tea knife. Actually, it's a tea knife. You know, there is these in China. You can have tea. This is like a brick, and it's hard like a brick that was even a currency in in ancient times, and you need to pray pray. Pry, yeah. pry a little right. piece off and this is a tea knife and i thought they look so nice and it's it's yeah. one euro free shipping from from china wow. but they're small throwing knives and yeah. they do just nice on a cardboard or, or just say they they really fly good so so you buy 10 or so and yeah, i have three now i bought three for three euros and i had three and they would be nice once in a small quiver or in an, an arm you know protected. yeah but yeah they're small it's nice and for... flat you know they have a very yeah. low profile yeah. yeah of course it's only some some piece of steel and it's not the best yeah. quality but one euro you know yeah. even when you lose them you don't care <laughs> It's fine. So that it's, is a nice concealed weapon. Yeah, of course. And it's, it's, it somewhere. it's officially it's a tea knife. So I have. And it's not too long. And so, yeah. It's just nice. And it, they fly really nice. It's, I was impressed. It's fun, fun to throw. They don't stick good in hardwood, but we have these palm tree uh, yeah. circles, discs yeah. out of palm tree. It's a bit more soft. And in these ones, you can throw them. They stick like nothing. It's just nice. Great. Great. Oh, now you had a little time to bring a knife because you forgot. Yeah, yeah. butter knife. A butter knife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, come Cody. on, show us. Special Cody. butter. But what is the history of the butter knife? Oh, I don't know. No, you don't know. You always have commercial. Because you say butter knife, what mm -hmm. is very interesting, and I, I think, I don't know if it's connected to the virus or something, for two weeks, we don't have peanut butter in our villa, in our Rewe. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know why. Are you serious? 
serious yeah but mm -hmm. i have to say it's not as popular as in the united states mm -hmm. i think yeah, yeah we have kind of exotic thing yeah. but i love it sometimes for mm -hmm. breakfast yeah yeah I think we have a pretty big peanut butter cult here in the U.S. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, you go to the grocery store and there's at least yep. 10 or 20 different brands of peanut butter. Yeah. Yep. Everything How, from where, where does that uh, came from? You know a story about it, about peanut butter? Because I, here around it's... It's just an American thing. He, no, this is well, they made always out of nuts. There's cashew <clears throat> nut butter, there's almond butter, which I like a lot because when you drink some smoothies, they put almond Smooth. butter in it. it it's better than, than peanuts because not everybody can take peanuts because some have allergic reactions. You're here, you're here, you're here, I Armin mean, Cody, when he's painting his fingernails, he's drinking <laughs> almond <laughs> smoothies. <laughs> You want to see my fingernails? <laughs> oh, it's unpainted. <laughs> oh, surprise, surprise. Uh, You're not the guy. Yeah. <laughs> I had no I time. I had to shave myself, <clears throat> you know. Uh -oh. Okay, so, so I have a knife today, or it's more like a dagger. And I don't, I once knew the name, but I didn't remember. It is a. I, I bought it in Tunisia, in Tunis, mm -hmm. in an antique store. Yeah. It's very interesting uh, made and mm -hmm. uh, it's a kind of dagger, you mm -hmm. see. And it's very nice in the hand and so on and very, mm -hmm. very uh, flat. And, and mm. I don't know the story behind this type. It's yeah, nice. it's, break it. yeah, it's very nice. I mm -hmm. like it. Yeah, they this know how to. They know how to make knives down there. <laughs> this is. Yeah. I had two. I, I bought two of them, and one I gave to a friend of mine. And these two were the only mm. real antique-looking mm -hmm. uh, knives there in this. In this. Not, not the area. touristic ones. Yeah, the tourism. It don't looks like. Yeah. Like it looks like. Mm. Yeah, because it's you see it's very interesting how it's made and so on so even not... where the blade goes into the into the shaft you see this this thing around yeah. it looks like like you know when you when you see yeah. a katana or yeah. something yeah yeah but yeah it's yeah. nice yeah. they look the and same and also the also the handle is interesting with yes. brass and wood and, and mm -hmm. oh, very nice. interesting yep cool yep. that, that kind of remind, that kind of reminds me of the uh dagger that fred bear got from the majorada boondi or whatever when he went over to to uh, shoot the lion or whatever it was. Do you remember mm -hmm. that, Peter? I remember. Um, and once I posted this, on, I posted it on Facebook, and uh, some guy knew the name of this type. And then I go, mm -hmm. but I forget. I'm an old guy. I forget yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you really show us only a butter knife today, Cody? That's all I got. Yeah. I can't believe you. I yeah. can't believe that you don't have one of these knives I mean, it's almost impossible he has 500 knives you know to get a butter knife is like like you win a lottery you know that's it you grab in the box and you pick up a butter knife it's i thought true. i thought you will show us a nice fred bear knife and file set because Ooh. they are very lovely i always love yeah them. that's i don't i don't have one of those i have been looking for one of those and those things are mm -hmm. they're quite expensive Mm -hmm. yes. And they remake them, no? I think they make kind of copies today. They, they make a copy, yeah. So, mm -hmm. but yep. I mean, I don't know if I showed this one or not, but it's a little pocket knife. It's just mm -hmm. probably made in the fifties or sixties. Okay. Wow, nice, nice. But, and what's there on this on these brackets engraved? At the handle, you see some engraving or something? um, it looks like it's uh, looks rust. like it's, yeah, rust and uh, some type of horn. I don't know what, mm -hmm. okay, like looks buffalo like horn, buffalo or, horn yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I don't to be honest, I don't even know where the hell I got it. <laughs> it says it's made in Germany, though, really, yeah, but I can't read the name. It says mm. Germany, but Solingen in most cases, it was Solingen, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I might have been one that my grandpa had or something. I got in a box of stuff, so mm -hmm. <clears throat> hard to say. Yeah, cool. 
So don't you you don't have a lot of knives? I can't believe. I, I do. I have some down uh, down in the basement. But yeah. I, I, a lot of them are just old junk that I was going to fix up here one of these days. Put some new scales on and some new handles. But yep. I was hoping to have my. Uh, you, you guys know what nick knives are, right? Yeah. 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 Of course. I'm making one out of a, a, a Howard Hill broadhead. Ooh, nice. I'm going to put a piece of stag or a deer antler mm -hmm. on the handle, and then you can just wear it as a nick knife. Nice. Nice job. So, Good idea. So, yeah. We know what the nick knife is. I might have not said Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, on that on that stick bow leather wall, they had uh, some threads about neck knives made from broadheads. Yeah, lovely idea, uh, especially also that screw in. Is you can make a, you can insert that you know that insert for an for an aluminum arrow or so into the into the antler oh, yeah. and yeah, yeah, very nice. I, I don't know where Millie is today. No, what is with Millie? I miss her. I, I let me look for her where she is. Okay. Same way I find my My favorite neck knife is a snake charm. I showed it once already in the show. Neck knife, and you have this nice small blade on it, but with a ring, so you can't lose it just in case you do something. I like it. it's very thin. It's a snake charm. It's from K Bar, I think. It's America. It's one of my favorite neck knives. I have others. Hmm? Where's Millie? Here There's she Millie. is. Here she is, Millie. Millie. My lovely, my love. <laughs> she's feeling good? Yes, she's nice. And you know, Oh, she's a little shy in front of the camera because mm. of the bright light and so mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. You yeah. need to get her glasses, yeah, sunglasses. Sunglasses, yeah, little Millie glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about you, Millie? <laughs> How many cats do you have, Peter? Pardon? How many cats do you have? Just that one, just that yeah. one. I had some before, but, you know, you know, because I'm living on countryside, they... Sometimes disappear simply. Yes, yeah, they disappear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But I love kids. Mm. <laughs> oh, hi. I said she doesn't hear. Hi, <laughs> hi Cody. <laughs> How are you over there? <laughs> and you know, okay, so I prepared something because, you know, um, I have to, Millie. Now go and do what we talked about before, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So go on, Millie. You know, because we talked about we talked about this this uh, <laughs> this monkey shit coffee and, oh. and, and <laughs> cat shit coffee. So I, you hear? You hear this? <laughs> you hear this? Millie's busy. I, I feed Millie coffee beans. Okay. And I thought, why not do it for myself? <laughs> this is very expensive. You hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very nice, Millie. Go on, go on, go on, Millie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a big yeah. one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Millie, you're lovely. Look. But that we don't have here? sense to I, I, I made, made this, you know, for usually I have this, this, you know, this box with this sand mm -hmm. inside for the cat. But now, let me have a look. I here I have the coffee, mm -hmm. and look. Oh, Millie, you, Millie, you're really nice. Look, you're nice. Look at this. Huh? <laughs> look, you can see the bean inside the yeah, yeah, yeah. The cat shit. Uh huh. Yes, and it's quite, <laughs> quite big. <laughs> and For you a know, cat, yeah. I, I tried it before. Look, you just have to put yeah, it in the coffee. <laughs> it's a little soft, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you stir it well. Mm -hmm. And now, that's it originally. Mm -hmm. Catch it coffee we talked about. Yeah, fine. Let me have you save a lot of money, you know that. <laughs> Wow, that's good. What? I don't really, Millie, you're wow. Well, thank you, Millie, for your job. Wow. Yeah, good job, Millie. Mm. I'm so mm. proud of you. 
Maybe I can make it make also a lot of money with that shit. I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you have to steer it well. Yeah. yeah. So you know this, you know this. Uh, the, yeah. It's a little gross, but yeah, of course you need to steer it. Yeah. But you get used to. Mm, yeah, of course. Oh, and well, it's really, get used to everything. Really? Wow. It's uh -huh. really. Mm. You see, it's a fun. nice, nice. Mm. Coffee beans. So, so, so Cody. Should I send you some portions of it over? I think you're not a coffee guy. <laughs> now not anymore. Huh? Yeah, drink maybe. <laughs> maybe, Cody, you could try it with the dog. <laughs> dog shit coffee must be good. Yeah. <laughs> also, nice. I'm, I'm just going to stick from to tea from now on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Turkey shit coffee. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, so you see, it's not so difficult to make your mm -hmm. own cat shit coffee. Mm -hmm. And when you see a kilogram costs, I think, thousands, so we make yeah. it. So this one is about $300, this mm -hmm. mug. Yeah. Enjoy. Mm. You deserve it. <laughs> Only the best for you, Peter. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah. yeah. Now, now Peter is going to go through his countryside and pick up every stray cat to... yeah, <laughs> and, and, and feed them coffee. <laughs> I guess a, a kind of manufacturing, a yeah, of course. catch it manufacturing. And yeah, made in Austria is always good, you know. Yeah, catch it made in Austria. You know, catch it coffee. But I, I couldn't find a monkey. Right? Yeah, it's okay. No, it yeah. was cats. It wasn't a monkey. I don't know where you come up with a monkey. I don't know, but I, I think you heard about it. No, no I only know. I also, I, 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 I told it to my girlfriend and she said, she saw once a television uh, documentary and they made it with elephants. But I said, oh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's not so easy to, to, to have a few elephants in the stable. So you better yeah. have 20 cats, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And you need big coffee mugs for the yeah. elephant yeah. <laughs> shit to get, to get in. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of coffee. <laughs> Cody, I think, doesn't participate in our talk anymore. Mm. <laughs> Peter, just don't let the local, your local uh, PETA find out you're uh, rehoming a bunch of uh, stray cats for uh, to making cat shit coffee. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. PETA will show and, up. Um, cat shit coffee, and when they are worn out, you can use their, their fur for string silences, you know? Mm -hmm. Cat string silences, cat whiskers. <laughs> yeah, see, o over here in America, around this time of the year, about well, a little bit closer to Halloween, they will actually some of the local like animal shelters and places will actually put out warnings, <clears throat> telling people to um, during the last week of um, October. Mm -hmm. To make sure that all their cats are inside because mm -hmm. there are people that will go out and pick up random cats. Mm -hmm. They do all types of horrible things with them during the Halloween season. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yep. You hear some of these horror stories also here around. I don't know if it's really true, but there are mm. pervert people around, of course. Yeah, we had a few years one here in Malta. He was nailing uh, cats on, on the doors of some churches, even on the big dome in Mosta. And you found a cat, a dead cat hanging there, and you saw that the cat was tortured. And that sounds kind of satan satanism, or yeah, most something probably. Like yeah, yeah, we have a lot. But then, isn't it in, in Australia where they have hundreds of thousands of feral cats yep. that they actually yep. pay people to go shoot? Mm. Uh, I used to uh, uh, subs had subscribed to that Australian bow hunter magazine, it's like the traditional bow hunter, mm -hmm. but Australian bow hunter. And they had a kind of trophy system for these cats. And you see, you see a guy with a bow and a big cat on the tail, and it is a kind of score. But mm -hmm. then after the time, they put it out because for mm -hmm. some people, these are cat, but they had huge numbers, mm -hmm. these feral cats. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so they shoot them on sight because there's so many. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the, the, the video I've seen on, on YouTube of the guy that was hunting them. Some of those cats look, some of the feral cats or wild cats, yeah. they look pretty mange and they look pretty 
like Millie, yeah. Some of them were mm -hmm. like house kids, yeah. Yeah, but some of them were pretty bad looking and really. <laughs> Yeah. But then they got all those wild. They have all those wild dogs, though, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they they had pic trophy pictures inside of camels. Camels they shoot because they can hunt camels there, and and horses and everything because everything is a kind of problem in Australia, okay. you know, because it was all brought in from outside. So they have no natural enemy, and mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. becomes more and more and more. Yes, it's kind of strange. You see a guy with a compound on the camera as a trophy. It's a no. camera trophy. Camera trophy. <laughs> and uh, uh, back then, when I was a boy here in countryside, a lot of old people had uh, cat fur. And it was seamed, you know, with a kind of, you have in a, in a jacket with that kind of silky seam. And they put it on their kidneys mm -hmm. and so yeah, and it was mm -hmm. quite usual yeah yeah why why throw it away and you know, it's a good fur yeah, yeah but nobody I mean, even even when you see in in china for the most expensive calligraphy pens brushes yeah they use these 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 whiskers of the cat but they wow. take them from live cats so they cut only one or two of a cat because otherwise yeah so they say so they cat. say <laughs> and yeah, they say and that's why these these are so expensive yeah. yeah yeah why not you know you know but i would honestly talking about all the wild game in australia mm. i would say i honestly would say it's a bow hunter's paradise compared to, yeah. to here in america yeah. but i mean but then again it'd be hard to compare the two but i i think it'd be kind of interesting to go to australia to be able to go and bow yeah, hunt yeah 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 uh my my friend Karl Hofmeister and Theo Shett. Theo Shett was with me in Idaho and, and they were at this Chef Chella comp, this bow yeah, where you have this one yellowish bow, Cody. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. And they hunted wild boar. They have lots of big, big wild boar, so it's quite dangerous to hunt them because there are so many. And uh, these uh, goats, you know, these are all how you call it, uh, verwildert, mm. uh, outwildert, mm -hmm. uh, house goats and house uh, pigs and so on. And yes, and even what is famous are these, uh, how they call it, not like, not like Cape Buffalo, Asiatic Buffalo. Yeah, and okay. I yeah. have seen videos, this uh, very not to dance a forest and they are walking these buffaloes around and they shoot them. Mm -hmm. Only <laughs> Mealy. Mealy, you make money. <laughs> it literally shits money, huh? <laughs> uh, uh. Now, Peter, did you uh, did you ever see any any of the old Pink Nathan videos when he was hunting? I think you hear us, Peter. Hello? 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 Did you bite the cable? <laughs> no, you hear it. She switched on the cable. Oh, okay. Bad, bad Millie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, think, think um, video. Yep. You got just a question from, from Cody. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem, Peter. No, I was going to ask you did you ever see any of the video, the old videos of Tink Nathan hunting like? In Australia, in New Zealand, do you ever see any of those? I think I have just seen one when he hunted in Africa. Mm. But he was quite a, a famous hunter, mm. or yeah. is a famous He's hunter. still a famous hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, shooting, shooting the Oneidas and... Yeah, yeah. and compound bows and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he... he he knew everyone, no? He knew Fred Bear. He knew, I think, even Bob Swinehart he knew, no? Yeah, I, yeah, he knew, uh, I think he I think he knew Swinehart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, he, he used a lot of Jerry Hill broadheads, didn't he? What? He? Yeah, Tink, didn't he use Jerry Hill broadheads? Back so. then, back then, yeah. 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 The yeah. original ones, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yep. He's, he's a living legend. <laughs> yep. But as we talked about before, 
these old Cherry Hill Broadway heads and also the new ones are superior to the original Howard Hill Broadway heads mm. because they were uh, a very well made feral and, and better steel for the blade, I think. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, yeah I haven't. I haven't got to play around with, with with any of the new ones yet, so mm. I, I have some of Jerry's older ones from the first time he made them. But, but these are good ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep on hearing Jerry. Jerry, I see all the guys posting and talking about how high quality they are. So, mm -hmm. and I seen a fella that he shot through a. I think he completely shot through a wild pig with one a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. so, well, but you know. Um, I think he charges 20 bucks for one broadhead. So that's a lot. I saw once in a catalog broadheads with an LED light uh, or laser beam in the front that where you point that you see, then one of these ones was $60. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, but once and you break it, so what the heck? Yeah. So once I shot the wild boar with a Howard Hill broadhead. It, it was running down a trench, so I shot from above and I, I shot through the spine into the heart. So the white board instantly collapsed. It, it was nice. not too heavy. It was about, I think, 60, about 120 pounds or so. Mm -hmm. But and I had a picture. I have to dig it up. You, I have made a picture where you see the arrow from the inside of the bore. Mm -hmm. protruding through the spine Very don't nice. point at Millie when you talk about killing <laughs> <laughs> you come here through <laughs> yeah it was here about Millie yeah. <laughs> now Peter what was the photo you had that you sent me years ago where the it was I think it was a wild boar where it was sitting down and you were like yeah so yep. uh, the story was like that I have to say it was in a fenced area because uh, you know these all were no hunters and there was a guy he he used to be a bowyer but a very funny guy and he was a kind of native american indian fan and so and uh, he wanted to shoot a really big wild boar and this one had uh, 240 pounds two no 280 Mm -hmm. 140 wow. kilograms it was okay. a big big white boar and uh, we went in there and that boy it was not afraid and so mm -hmm. and he shot at the boar and hit it very high you know here in the in the chops so to say mm -hmm. it was no no real damage done to the boar and then the boar turned around and charged and mm -hmm. the guy said what should we do now and I said shoot shoot mm -hmm. shoot mm -hmm. and then we shot and we brought it down of course but it was mm -hmm. kind of exciting mm -hmm. and interesting enough i shot one broadhead i uh, it was one of these old uh, apes grizzly broadheads uh i think 160 grain i don't have one i have one but i haven't it at the hand and you know these are like three to one ratio mm -hmm. and the i shot it through the upper leg here and the broadhead was bent mm -hmm. so you know it's very a very tough broadhead cody knows about that grizzly broadheads is a very tough broadhead and it was kind of bent a little mm -hmm. from the shot and you can hear the sound like you would hit glass clink mm -hmm. devastating broadhead mm -hmm. yep oh. I would, yep. And I, that I was would... that picture <laughs> and yeah I would have to say though, other than the Howard Hill broadhead, my favorite broadhead is used to be the Ribtex from Australia. Yeah, yeah. The, the the bigger ones. Hundred and ninety grains. Yeah, yep. and and so nice to sharpen with a file or something. You know, you it was very soft steel, but for hunting it's okay. You mm -hmm. you you sharpen them with a file. I yeah. have here quite a collection of some prototypes. Mm -hmm. I think the guy's name was Cole Graham, who made them. And he sold the business after then. And back, I don't know, I think it was in the 90s, you could buy a whole pellet of, I don't know, 
Mm -hmm. 5,000 or something, but I hadn't the money and I didn't like to sell them and so. Mm -hmm. But he had from, I think from 100 grain to 190 grain. Mm -hmm. And they were very nicely made like that old, i, I show you one. They were made like that old uh, Ben Pearson brought it with its slotted ferrule, you see? Mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. yeah and a very a very nice thing because it was it is one one uh, step of work with one machine it was choom, mm -hmm. choom, choom, and one one step was one brought it you know one yeah. turn of the machine mm -hmm. he had a very very powerful how you call it a stance uh, uh, press, press, press. Yeah. How you call it? Press. press. Yeah, a, a die press. A die press. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. And they were made in all sizes. I think this is a hundred and ninety grain, a big one. Mm -hmm. and, quite... and they and they're damn near indestructible too. You, they're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very durable. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they were cheap. I don't know what they costed. They were very cheap. So if you shoot one away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Want matter, yeah. Because the some I took, I bought a couple dozen of them when I seen them, and uh, I took one of them and I was shooting them, shooting them into a hardwood tree just to see how much, you know, how much they could take, and mm -hmm. I must have shot it into that tree maybe eight, ten times before I gave up because it just <laughs> yep. damn, they were damn near indestructible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. yeah. And some guy said this will. This will slow down the penetration, these ribs. Mm -hmm. But I, they, this Australian guys told me they put grease on here on this mm -hmm. rib, so it's, it's more slippery. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you hit it nicely, yeah, it won't matter. Yeah. Yeah. It's all talking. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, and that's. I mean, that's the other thing too. With you know, with the archery history. I mean. My God! Look at all the different broadheads that were designed. Yeah, that are still designed. It's like it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's just like the bows. It's just a copy of another copy of another copy that yeah. you know. Yeah. And there were weird, weird ones around. I have this, as I told you, this Wade Phillips uh, encyclopedia of broadheads. A weird mm -hmm. patents around and and. Mm -hmm. uh, early mechanical plates and, and <laughs> crazy stuff. Yeah. Or you know that Browning spiral killer. <laughs> you remember it like was it like a cork screw yep. or something. Yep. <laughs> Somewhere I have one, but not over there. Yeah. What what is the benefit of having a, a cork spiral? The, the idea was that they cut the big hole like an eight shape. Mm -hmm. And but they they, I don't know. I I can't imagine how they sharpened them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We. I will yeah. pick it up next time I show it to you. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I used to call them like the apple core because the way yeah. you could almost core an apple with the darn thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But, and and then of course they had the broadheads at uh, where if you shot left wing feathers, the broadhead yeah, would. Had a left wing helical on it, so it supposedly make the arrow spin faster. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, oh, so. screws in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the idea at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. theoretical awesome. idea. But, mm -hmm. It's crazy. Some of those old broadheads, some of those old broadheads, if they're rare, they bring quite a bit of money here in America. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just. Mm -hmm. Because of the fancy design, or because they were really good in what they're either made. that or they're just extremely rare, where there wasn't very many made. Okay, so, but... like with everything, yeah, mm. yeah. So. And there are a lot of collectors, I guess, who collect this stuff, right, in America. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure how many guys are still collecting broadheads. Mm. I know. I know when I uh, when I first started, there used to be a lot of guys that mm -hmm. collect. Them, but I'm not sure if there's still many guys that are mm. collecting them nowadays or not. Uh, so. Look, just look, have a look at, on this one. Wow. 
-hmm. but I think they call it also cookie cut or something. Mm -hmm. But it's not uh, possible to sharpen them properly. So the mm -hmm. idea was also that big hole, you know, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Let me have a look. I have some here. Here is a... Don't cut yourself. <laughs> here's a very early mechanical blade. How, how is the name? Cody, you know it, I'm, I'm sure. A mohawk uh, swivel. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. And the idea was the, the arrows flies like that, and then it opens up mm -hmm. on impact, and you have a kind of that, that brick product. But mm -hmm. I can't imagine if they ever work. The first, it is a plastic ferrule here. So mm -hmm. I guess it would break. And if you don't hit exactly, you see. It doesn't so open it, properly. It yeah. doesn't open properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, but they had crazy ideas. Interesting. Maybe good. They had a lot of time and needed something new. And here is that spiral killer. You see? Wow. Or how is? I think they were called spiral killer. No. I believe so. Yeah. But looks very, looks very fancy. Yeah. yeah. But I can't imagine how they sharpened this, this mm. is, you can sharpen them here in front of course but the rest. crazy thing yeah looks good yeah mm. here is i don't know if i ever showed them cody you know them this is one the point is not original because i i need one if you have one i need one it was that how were they called on the original rambo arrow uh, you know, with this, with this uh, slicer, slicer, something. Mm. I don't know. And this is one original. It's written on mm. Rambo. Signed, signed by children, Rambo. <laughs> yeah, really. It, it, you know, Cody, back then they sold kind of Rambo compound bow sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is one of these arrows, and it's a, a takedown mm -hmm. arrow. You see, you can mm -hmm. fold that arrow. Now is that is it made out of aluminum or is that fiberglass? Yeah, it's I know it's in twenty two ten X X seventy five Eastern I think, and it's Rambo is written on. I I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. How is this takedown mechanism made? Yeah, here's right. Uh, it's an aluminum insert and a kind of rubber band and it slips a rubber band okay mm -hmm. and i tried it they fly no of course yeah mm -hmm. yeah i got this one from a friend of mine mm -hmm. uh, i think they are quite expensive now yeah 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 and yeah, the thing what always bugged me even with the survival bow we were talking about because i have then a set of takedown arrows because you have the bow in 22 inches length and then the arrows are 28 inches or 29 inches so they collapse them in the middle but i think it's always dangerous to have an arrow exactly split yeah. in half in the middle because this is where the most uh, flex is going to happen so when you have the arrow joint it should most probably be more in the first third part than you yeah. have not this big problem i don't know i think it with an aluminum arrow it's not a too big problem but uh Maybe it's even a reinforcement because you have two two tubes going into each other. Yeah. yeah speaking speaking of the takedown arrows, I seen one time on Amazon or some of one of those weird online buy sites, they had takedown arrows that were three piece takedown arrows. Yes, exactly. And Look, I, and uh, oh, go ahead, Peter. Look, Cody, it's a very old flight arrow. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, it's written on the name of the owner and uh, Madison, Wisconsin, 1950, I think, or something, mm -hmm. with a horn knock, mm -hmm. a very small fledge, yep. and very, you see, like a and a kind of uh, a, a only a thin point, very, yeah, very light point. Yeah. Yep. Wow. I think I have one more. Yes, there's one more. There's also something written on it. 1940. Mm. Also, nice. the needle kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah, point. they all have this. Uh, 
Yeah, and very Small low yeah. <laughs> fledge. And it's a self knock, a wooden self knock here mm -hmm. in the back. Mm. It's just painted. Yep. yep. Nice. Once I bought a bunch of, of, of old arrows from the United States. <laughs> yep. Mm. Very well made uh, target arrows, you see, with footing and. and mm -hmm. And there's the brand on uh, Cody. You may know know it. Rome Specialty Company Incorporation, Rome, New York. That's a, that's a new one. That's a new one on me. Ooh, that's that's very nice. It is so Cody's eyes got a little a little bigger yeah. now. Oh, look how well made. Yeah, and you know they painted. They painted the quill of the feathers with the with the color of this, mm -hmm. this of this crown dip on so they mm -hmm. very very well made. Mm -hmm. Here's another one of that set. Rome. Mm -hmm. oh, shit. Light Rome Specialty Company Incorporation. Mm -hmm. Rome, New York. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Well, I don't know if you know this, Peter, but uh, I'm. Did you know that the the clothing company Abercrombie and Finch back in the day they yep. actually they actually sold archery equipment. I think I heard about. Yep. But I don't know. Did they make them their themselves? Or oh, I here's don't... here's here's a weird one. Look at the, that one. Jesus Christ. I don't know. I don't remember the name, but mm. it looks very weird. Now you know where the ideas of all these Star Wars fighting jets come from. <laughs> they saw a broadhead and oh look, this is like yeah. the Falcon yeah. fighter of yeah, Star yeah, Wars yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. Joking, of course I'm joking. I'm joking. Cody, I'm only joking. Yeah. This I have one, no idea. I don't watch Star Wars. That's why I, 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 I don't mean, either. I, I don't can read that sign. It was made in Massachusetts. It had a nice label on it. It is mm -hmm. four fledged. Four fledged. They're very nice. And and uh, yeah, interest, interesting. Interesting. Mm. Target arrow. Wow, that uh, the uh, the flakings are really far forward from the the throat yeah. of the knot. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Perfect for me for thumb shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it was a kind of, of glued on brand on it, so mm -hmm. I I think it was a, a, a boat arrow, not a homemade one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever Cody make spliced arrows? You know, wood arrows that you have the front part is whatever, like a heavy duty wood, and in the back you splice in then some softer wood or something. Did you ever do this? I messed around with it. I'm not. Uh... I don't do it much. I, mm. but I've I've done it before. It's kind of a pain in the butt if yeah. you don't have the if you don't have the right equipment to do yeah. it. So I I read in traditional I think it was traditional bow hunter magazine. A guy showed how to do it with a router and I had him. Mm -hmm. He made a made a um, a form and all that. But I've mm. I guess I've never messed around with it. Mm. Yeah, really. I understand. This one is made from a steel saw blade, like Sexton Pope or so. They made them back then. Mm -hmm. And this one, actually, I shot in 1994 through a white bar. Mm. <laughs> nice. Self knock. Mm -hmm. Back then, I was a Sexton Pope guy, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, now, now, what do you guys prefer on if you're going to fletch up arrows? Do you guys prefer like the natural colored feathers or uh, colored feathers, or do you guys prefer natural turkey feathers, the gray bar? I like them. Mm. Me too. But but in my opinion, the best arrows are the bright ones, yellowish, white, orange, and so on. This one I got from Nate Steel, Nate mm -hmm. Steen. Mm -hmm. It's one of his hunting arrows. Mm -hmm. so. mm. My my most beautiful arrows were with gray goose feathers. I I, pol I polished the shaft and I, you know, the lacquer and polished again with steel wool. So they were really looking like glass. And then I put gray goose feathers on it. it was and and the whipping around and they were like. Meh. In my opinion, um, 
if you have very bright feathers, you give your eyes a chance to follow yes. the trail. Yes. And 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 so so you have it in your brain mm. how an arrow flies and helps so. you helps you with your instinctive shooting yes of course when you first visualize the flight and then you see the arrow flying when you have a black arrow some people like black arrows and can you make a black fletching on it that you don't see anything it doesn't help you shooting so you need some bright fletching that one cody you may know the brand is from um, uh, cedar smith company back mm -hmm. then they sold compressed cedar mm -hmm. and you know these are so stiff and, mm -hmm. and tough you can shoot them on the concrete wall they won't break yeah. and this is it was interesting how big this towel was before they compressed yeah. it this yeah yeah yeah. yeah but they came up with technology yeah so, wow look what i have here cody you know what this is isn't that a isn't that a corn stalk arrow acupuncture uh i know what you're thinking about but in my opinion and as it i bought it it was an archery golf arrow okay archery okay so, so it will we would stick in the meadow you know in the green mm -hmm. you will if it comes down it will hundred percent damage yeah yeah and it it will stand in the mm -hmm. in the field yeah mm -hmm. look at these old knocks i don't know the brand they look Quite like like Stotler knocks, but have no index, and maybe it's an old Stotler, no? Mm. No, no, that would probably be either. Most likely, that would be an Easton Min knock. Mm. The, the the same brand that Howard Hill used with mm. Easton. Maybe, Min. maybe, yeah. Yep. But Ben Pearson also made made some uh, Min knocks, but they had little indicators on them. I don't remember the name of these knocks. The arrow is da the feathering is damaged, but I have quite two or mm -hmm. three hundred left mm -hmm. from them. I don't know the name, but these are also have a nice big, big, right. uh, yeah. yeah, and the nice yeah, they open up a little and they have two sides, yes, two nice flat sides, very big, so area. you can handle yeah. it very. You know exactly and, where you have it, and that's an interesting arrow. A guy from Germany. Mm -hmm. made this arrow wood and he inserted glass fiber two laminations of glass fiber into mm -hmm. the wood you see okay. mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting mm -hmm. very heavy mm -hmm. very tough glass fiber yeah, yeah. Oh. That, i don't know or carbon or something but there's some mm -hmm. there's a three these are five laminations, three mm -hmm. of arrow wood and two of something. Mm -hmm. But goes it in a cross section completely through or like yeah, like... yeah, it's yeah. yeah but it's, then it's only then it's only one direction more. more. Uh, it was thought to to make the arrow stiffer if you put okay. the knock on like this, so okay. the arrow would the be order. stiffer. Okay. Okay. Like mm -hmm. in that direction, it's okay. weak, and in that direction, it's stiffer. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very durable arrow. Mm. Yeah, what people come up with this is interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had when I was working in Sylt, we had a bunch from I think from Indonesia, and they had very thin bamboo arrows, but it was laminated bamboo. So it wasn't one piece bamboo, they had small stripes and they glued them together. They were very thin but heavy and stiff, and they flew like like a needle, really nice. But they were handmade, hand numbered, and then this, I don't know, <laughs> didn't exist anymore. So yeah, well, it was nice. Now show us your most favorite arrow now. I don't know. I don't. You don't know. Okay. <laughs> that was one set I made myself, like mm -hmm. Howard Hill's arrow. I saw it in one movie. Mm -hmm. it, it painted like that, so I made them <laughs> for myself. Nice. Yeah. And these are these old, I put on my own brand, but these are these that Sims arrows I told you about. They were made in Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they were available back then in 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 Deutsche Mark. They were about 10 mark. 
about 70 shillings one okay it was not too expensive and they were very well matched and made and nice yeah. feathers and everything wow. yeah they are not and i think it's the same company which made that old jerry hill arrows mm -hmm. interesting yep yeah. yeah i have a very old mm -hmm. Afri african arrow yeah and uh, it's very interesting. The foreshaft is made, I think it is from the height from a leg from a small animal. Mm -hmm. So they put it on and let it shrink. So it mm -hmm. fastened the broadhead. Mm -hmm. And they told me it was a poison arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, there are little grooves here in mm -hmm. the broadhead. And they said they, they put here the, the poison. I think it's not poison anymore, but. No, lick, lick on it and try. Still the coffee with, <laughs> you know, still yeah. you're catching yeah. coffee with Very a Very interesting. Girl. You see the fletch is, yeah. is, is yeah. gone, but these are one, two, three, four fletch and mm -hmm. just on the ends, the feathers were mm -hmm. wrapped on, yeah. onto the shaft. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. um, very well made project, no? Yep. Come on, Peter, stir your coffee and lick it. Let's, let's, let's see it. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Edge it and African um, Maasai poison. Exactly. Good Hotten combination, I guess. Cotton tot yeah. poison or something. Yeah. yeah, you know, others put sugar and milk in the coffee. You know what the heck? <laughs> oh, no, here they added milli beans. Ugh. Oh, milli beans, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit disgusting, but hey, <laughs> what we do for a joke, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess you could call it uh, the archer's coffee or... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And here, when I was in Korea in 2017, I got a set of three of these Korean arrows mm -hmm. and very well made. And they sand the quill completely down. You see, yes. there's no... Yep. No... Will nobody does it, but it's a very, very good idea, especially when you do when you shoot horse bows because very the, smooth, very smooth. You can't, don't stretch you your can't, fingers when you shoot bare hand, you can't hurt yourself. Yeah, yeah, and that it's not the that's not the wrapping, it's just painted. Mm -hmm. Here in the back, it's very interesting. It's a kind of wrapping. I don't know how I, how it is made, mm. looks kind look of like like paper or silk or I don't know. Silk. Usually they use silk, yeah. Every, every, um, every archer over there got a set of three of these arrows wow. and a little quiver. Mm -hmm. But I gave the two arrows and the quiver to Wendy because, you know, she, mm. is, and I, I just kept, only kept one arrow. Just, yeah. just for showing on Korean mm -hmm. arrow. Makes sense. Nice. So she had a kind of souvenir. Mm. I had once arrows, wood arrows. There was the, in the shaft, there was a small groove in it. So when you glued the feather in, the whole quilt yeah. disappeared. So you only had the feather showing up. I found this a very nice idea. Yeah, I think also the, the American Indians made it sometimes. Mm -hmm. No, Cody? They made grooves. Yeah. And glued the feathers inside. I don't know if this, I always... When I'm making an art, when I'm giving an archery uh, clinic, I always say it's a, you know, you need a story for everything. Mm. I always say it's a Chinese arrow, but I don't, I don't know what is really, what it really is. It's a very pointy kind mm. of tin, and it's made of cane, mm -hmm. not not of bamboo, but of cane, yeah. and very interesting how, uh, how the feathers are. Mm -hmm. You see how nicely they are wrapped and and yeah. and, and with a kind of nice made, gold yeah. foil and so mm -hmm. on. It's very lightweight. It's more a ceremonial yeah. arrow, yeah. Or, or like a flight arrow. So yeah, mm -hmm. but wouldn't, then you wouldn't have that big fletching on it. I don't know, or a tourist stuff. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think more either ceremonial something. Because could it be? Special. Could it be Indonesian or something? Yeah, could be too. I don't know. It doesn't Cody. look very Chinese to me right now. Yeah. I always say I got it from my Chinese princess. 
Okay. <laughs> But she got it from Indonesia, so it's fine. <laughs> from his other, if, from, if from her, her other boyfriend from Indonesia. <laughs> if somebody of our viewers know where they get this arrow, then they can write it in the comments. That's why we are an interactive team here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to be careful with my jokes, you know, lest I posted a photo of a beautiful model and she was dressed in some native uh, American whatever with feathers and everything and she held the bow quite a little wrong and I was making a joke so don't say anything about the technique but then directly cultural inappropriation how can she wear this she didn't earn it so hey, you need huh hey guys I'll be right back all right okay, right so, okay. Give a second. yep give me just a second no worries <clears throat> This one is made by Magen Klomp, a kind yep. of medieval arrow. Very mm -hmm. well made, very nice, yeah. uh, kind of potkin heads. Yeah. Yep. Now, the, the craftsmanship of him is, is really, if, even these uh, Kurgan bows I had, this is like very clean and very nice. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, like yeah. a Porsche design. So there's nothing what you yeah. don't yeah. need. Yeah. It's simply reduced, but what, how it's made, it's simply just clean and nice. So he really. Good yep. craftsman. Yeah. Yep. Makes nice stuff. Once I had a, fr a friend from Sturia. He was a kind of uh, Native American Indian fan and had a kind of, uh, uh, I think, an Osage mm -hmm. Indian bow. And I made him a set of original Indian arrows. Oh, so nice. Jackie uh -huh. Fletch and, and it was <laughs> leather wrapping and a little. I had a book and there was a little, you know. Red uh, cord mm -hmm. tied with nice six mm -hmm. yeah. things you do, huh? <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. I think I made them 24 of these ones. Wow, yeah, crazy. This is what I gave up when I was just was saying with these nice arrows I made and I polished them and then I made one and then with the, with the whipping around and I thought I now have another 11 because I made a dozen. And I didn't. I made three, and I said that's nice. Fine. I think that I, don't I think that patterns were in the the, the Boyer's Bible. There are a mm -hmm. lot of Native American patterns, and I made this set after these mm -hmm. patterns. Speaking of arrows, Peter or Armin, have you ever read this book? Let's see. It's called The Archer's Craft by Barnes. Nope. I don't know. I guess he was an English guy. Mm -hmm. um, the only copyright date I can find in here is from the like late nineteen twenty seven. Wow. Mm -hmm. But there's like two or three chapters on arrows and different style of like little fletching styles and mm -hmm. so. Cool. It's crazy how they, back then they were even playing around with that stuff. Yeah. Yep. I mean, when you see archery is since 50,000 years, and of course they had time and they always tried to invent something new, even 1,000 and 5,000 years ago, they tried to do something new. And of course, now with industrial revolution, they have more possibilities to work with, more tools and stuff. Of course they tried. Yeah. And even in this, even in this book, they were talking about doing like copying the Indians where they wrapped the, the feathers on instead of gluing them. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So. yep. <sighs> Once I made a set of, for another friend because he had an English longbow and I made uh, with you wood reinforced self knocks. Nice. Big feathers and wrapping and kind of mm -hmm. British <laughs> crest. Mm -hmm. You have a cresting machine or you did it by hand? I had a kind of cresting machine, but a self a homemade. Mm -hmm. I used a, a, a motor from a, uh, you know, that the cassette player yeah. and, and the rubber band. So it was mm -hmm. like, okay. a, and I just put it on two <laughs> kind sense. of V shapes and, yeah. you know, the, the belt. Enough. That's the job. Turned there, yeah. 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 <laughs> How inventive Peter was. Yeah, yeah. yeah back then I was. 
Mm-hmm. Back then you were really into archery, you know, now it changed. Now you're yeah. into catch the coffee. <laughs> and this is my favorite one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I uh-huh. copied it from the Green Arrow uh-huh. comic books. Yep. Where did you get this small fist? This is a small glove from. You can. I think I bought them at Amazon or somewhere. I still have some pairs left. If you need some, okay. no, no. you you get them. They are sold for putting on to the mirror in the car. Okay. You get a set of two, mm-hmm. and I put a rubber plant on the arrow, mm-hmm. and then I. I, I just yes. and I never thought they will fly straight mm-hmm. because they're not, not mm-hmm. a big shape. Yeah, but they fly really nice. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I will keep that one for our friend Bonobo, Bonobo Krause. Bono. You know him? Adolf Krause. No, what? Adolf. Oh yes. Uh, you have seen his nice movie clip. I think you showed me. He shot at me. Mm -hmm. The crossbow. Yeah, yeah. At a distance of ten meters, kind of, with the sight on the crossbow was on a on 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 a tripod, and he still missed you. He only shot your arm. Oh yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what you did now to him. I have no idea. So that's. I, but I told you once. Him. You you can be his friend, and he wakes up the next day, and you are his enemy. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what I did yeah, wrong yeah. to him. There was a time he posted always my friend Armin, and he posted the book yeah. The Archer, and my friend yeah. everywhere, wherever he was, he posted, and I'm his best friend and whatever. And yeah. I don't know what happened next day. Yeah. He started burning the book, and I was a cheater and a liar and a whatever. I don't know. That's one for Cody. Look, it's one Ooh. of that old Howard Hill Creepers, you see. Is that is that an original? That's an original, yeah. You somewhere. Yes, here's the here's the old Howard Hill logo. You can see it. Yeah, bad. But yeah. there's something yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we need better web cameras. Huh? But <laughs> these are very stiff and very yeah. heavy quivers. But mm-hmm. very well made. I think Bob Swine had used them, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. They, and you know, at the bottom, the letter is three layers, so the broadhead mm-hmm. can't cut mm-hmm. through. And so uh, they had a crazy price. I got this. You know what? I bought an old bow on eBay, and with the bow, where I don't know, three arrows and that quiver. And I just bought it because of the quiver. <laughs> and back then, mm. uh, I think Cody will remember, they, I think they had one listed at eBay for about $3,000 or so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you can get, I think here, or you still can get the Howard Hill quiver made by Craig. And I think they're under $200. Mm. Uh, this this uh, model Craig uh, had made after these ones, I reinvented for him, and uh, it was a German company making these quivers. And Craig told me they just stopped making these quivers because their sewing machine broke. Because you need a a, a sewing machine with a very long arm to get mm-hmm. this long mm-hmm. uh, this long sewing done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and the guy who made them, his, I don't know, his machine broke, and so they stopped it. Mm-hmm. They stopped selling them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the the remade ones are more comfortable, more better because mm-hmm. it is softer leather. They are mm-hmm. better. Oh, they and are cheaper, and cheaper. But it's not the original, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, you know the 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 saddlery charged uh, the, the 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 how you say the distribute this distribute the price was I think about one hundred or ninety one hundred or ninety mm-hmm. euros around. So yeah. for reselling, you had to charge about two hundred. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For a good quiver, it's fine. Yeah, it's well made, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. <clears throat> and it seems like everybody back in the day was making a 
making a Howard Hill style quiver for sale too. Yeah, yeah. In every catalog, you had one kind of Howard Hill model. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. And you know, because our friend Bo, uh, I did a little research today in the in on the internet, and and you wouldn't believe what I found. I found mm. a nice picture of Bo. Bonobo, oh, oh, where is he? You can see. He, he back then he carried a nice beard, and yeah, mm. I, I think he will love that one. Yeah, for sure. You should send it to him. I have his address, so you can send it to him. Oh yeah, he will love it. He can yeah. shoot at it. He can <laughs> shoot at himself, but he will miss again. At so. himself. <laughs> crazy, yeah, crazy. yeah. But you know, when you when you shoot at these things, as I said before, there was once this movie with Bruce Lee when they had this tournament and then this big guy stood in front of him with a piece of wood and he oh, hit the piece of wood and it broke. And Bruce Lee, very cool and dry, boards don't hit back. You know, it's always <laughs> easy to shoot at a piece of paper or a photo yeah, of someone yeah. or burn a book like a coward. You know, this is very easy to do, but facing someone and it's then, it's very, you know, it's consequences then you know shooting at the person uh, even on the pictures uh, quite nasty no because yeah, it's course. a kind of kind of voodoo thing i think you shoot at the picture of that guy so hey, what, I don't what know. he thinks it is for him yeah yeah, yeah this is yeah. Um, helps him most probably with some certain problems he has in his lower area i don't know in fact i'm happy that he didn't hurt himself with the crossbow no yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it was a little embarrassing that he missed. I, I was watching then, I say, so I'm sure and then he showed and then he, he zeroed in and shot his yeah. shot your arm. So it's a little, yeah. yeah, he could have done better, you know. I don't know what he's doing with this poster. Maybe he's, he's using it like a voodoo puppet. And yeah, things. maybe. <laughs> but, you know, this works only when you mentally agree. So it's fine. Yeah. I mean, it helps him overcome his whatever problems he have in his life i'm sorry for him because yeah, it's, it's actually a poor guy yeah, yeah yeah so stay away from drugs cody yeah i just tell you mm. <laughs> not, too man, not too much booze and drugs and so let it stick with dr pepper you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's good sugar in it you know everything healthy, you need to grow healthy sugar yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, what can we do? But it's it's still not a nice thing what he is doing. I mean, he made somebody send me then an apology video where, where he sent when I posted this, you know, what I what he accused me all. Then he made an apology video, but you know, and then he blamed now the author of the book that she was a liar and she was lying for everything. And I mean, I would trust her cut off fingernail more than a bow kraus so i don't know i don't know this is it's a bad story yeah, yeah. and he's he doesn't find an end this is the thing he doesn't give up he has nothing to do yeah. so he is always okay who is my enemy today so i need to do something i i, I got an idea maybe someone should show him how to masturbate or something so mm -hmm. he, he would have to do something <laughs> yeah Maybe so, he tried and uh, he needed some, some tweezers for it because it, <laughs> you never know. He wouldn't find his his little bonobo. Mm. Um, so what is the conspiracy of the week? Cody, do you have one? What is your favorite conspiracy theory back to, over there in the United States? I would have to say right now, the thing I just heard this morning on the news was... Uh, have you heard how we have all these ships from China there in the port? Mm -hmm. yep. They came out that they can't unload all the stuff off. Yep, of them. yep, yep. I heard this morning they were saying that they're full of uh, Chinese military just waiting to get unloaded when we're least expecting that. Mm. I, I think I don't. I don't believe that. Mm. But, and I also think it's a kind of trick to raise the price of different goods mm -hmm. because they said the ships can get unloaded and that's why the price is higher for some goods and so on yeah yeah 
China, China, seen... has, China has a completely different strategy. They they would not go now with ships and then it's no. Sun Tzu. Mm. China, China took over the world's business without firing one shot. Yeah. Like Sun Tzu wrote in his book, if you can make yeah. the other it's... work for you, pay you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, Cody, Today I've seen a very weird uh, video of Kamala Harris when she was at the NASA with children. And she, you have seen it? No, I have not. Uh, watch it out. It's crazy. And additionally, it turned out that the children she was talking at were kind of actors, not... Mm -hmm. At least one was a child mm -hmm. actor, mm -hmm. and she talked like, "Oh, I, you can, you will see the craters on the moon with your own eyes." Mm -hmm. And so, very mm -hmm. weird. Like she never, uh, you, you would talk like that that to children of five years or so, mm -hmm. and she talked to teenagers to mm -hmm. 15, 14, 15 years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. definitely crazy. The whole, the whole anything with the government's absolutely crazy. Yep, 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 yep. yep. I, it's to the point where I don't even try to watch anything about the anything going on with the government because um, my favorite, one, my favorite is Tucker Carlson. I'm watching Tucker Carlson at mm -hmm. uh, Fox News. You don't like him, Cody? <laughs> I really, don't, I don't really like any of the news media outlets because, yeah. Yeah. because one will say something and then the next news media will say something different and it's just. Yeah. Yep. I mean, even our local news is kind of bad. Where you Same watch, here. Yeah, it's just. Yeah. You know, you know. I don't know if you have, if you have uh, noticed this, Cody. Here in Austria, we had this last week and this week a big scandal. Our chancellor has to step down or how is it called step back yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, they manipulated polls and put it into mm. the newspapers and media and horrible horrible stuff they paid the media to publish faked polls mm -hmm. well i heard a week or so ago maybe it was last week that the uh was it a prime minister one of the prime ministers or something austria you were Step yep. down you for some for some reason. Yeah, yep. that's a story. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Yep. Every er, all around. But because you say you don't like any of these outlets, uh, when in 2016, when when the uh, the presidential election was where Trump won, I followed all these these uh, you know this this uh, this election campaigns and so. And I watched MSNBC and CNN and all, you know, this ABC and, you know, and uh, in my opinion, the Fox News, they played the clip and there you can see what Trump said. Mm. And then the other outlets, they just talked about and cut it. So mm. he said that what they like to have mm -hmm. saying. Yeah. Him and... yeah. Well, I. It might have been it might have been last night or the night before. Um, even CNN news, which is you know pretty much you know has always been on the side of a Democrat. Yep. They were talking about how they were actually showing, I guess, the poll numbers for Joe Biden <laughs> and how bad he was doing. Which I was really surprised. Yep. Yep. He must be doing a really bad job if even his own. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And you know what. Uh, because these are the worst people, these journalists, because one day they are your friend, mm -hmm. the next they only need the sensation, they only need the, the big headline, the big scandal, the big trouble. And so even if they liked you yesterday, today they will throw you a knife in your back. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. The biggest horse, you said it before, media, yep, the yep. journalists are the biggest horse. 
biggest horse on the planet, mm -hmm. uh, Strache used to say in that mm -hmm. Ibiza video. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even even when you see in Germany, there is the, the Bild, it's, it's a newspaper and it was really the worst newspaper you can think of. And they have a very critical yeah. uh, things to say about all this Corona hype. And so, so even they yeah. can't hide it or simply play the mainstream song. They even show the other side, but on the yep. could be, of course, that they want it to because they want to have clash, conflict, yep. conflict yep. sells yep. and, and creates yep. even more conflict. And and they found a kind of space where they where they can produce different headlines, yep. also scandalous headlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you know, uh, I think it was last week they there was a kind of scandal with. Um, How is the guy from the Robert Koch Institute? Um, I forgot. Wheeler. Mm -hmm. Wheeler, Carsten Wheeler. Yeah, Wheeler. And uh, they really don't know the numbers of the vaccinated. Of course not. They don't know it. They just, they, they are estimating or mm -hmm. something. They ask 100 people on the street and then, okay, yeah, yeah. whatever. And then we simply yeah. multiply with the population. Yeah. And yeah. then we have a number. Yeah. yeah, very, very well made. I mean, yeah. your research about Robert Koch, you know, then you know what he oh, did. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, this Cody, this is a, was a very famous German, uh, what was he, a chemist or a pharmacist or something, yeah, something a, a yeah. kind of doctor. And um, he was kind of addicted and, and crazy, not addicted, how you say. Uh, he was totally in viruses and so on. Mm. And he had kind of concentration camps in Africa where he vaccinated black people mm -hmm. just to, to prove his theories about mm -hmm. viruses and so on. Yeah. And today, this Robert Koch Institute is called after this guy. Mm -hmm. And if you just read the Wikipedia article, yeah. it's horrible. And all the decisions the government in Germany is making are based on on, on information of from this Robert Koch Institute. They say, listen, this and this, and the government says, okay, when you say so. And yeah. it's and it's uh, they always uh, take it like it's an an an, an, an independent institute institute, yeah. but it's uh, it's part of the Ministry of Health mm. of Germany. It's not an independent. Yeah. And the next uh, beauty is that Johns Hopkins University in the United States. It's, 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 the, it's a counterpart, yeah, exactly. And this one is paid and run really by Bill and Melinda yeah, Gates. Gates. Of course, of their foundation, yeah. Their foundation, yeah. Yep. Horrible. Yeah. Now, are you, are you guys still on any type of lockdowns or like any like any like you got to wear a mask when you go out or anything yeah, like yeah. yeah we have here now right now it's optional for restaurants and cafes that they say okay if you only let vaccinated people in they show you the vaccinating pass then you can have more seats because they restricted the seating numbers in every restaurant so every you could only use every second table so to say And now they tell you oh, when you only open for the vaccinated ones, then you can have more seats. And in nightclubs, you can make the music louder. Yeah. And you can make play louder music. What the heck? But of course, you still need when you go on the street, nobody, almost nobody is wearing masks anymore. But when you go in a shop or something or in, in a restaurant, you wear a mask until you sit down. In the Netherlands, they had absolutely no masks. Mm. Uh, nothing in, in no place yeah no no like it is here i mean are there lots of jobs over there after covid like is there a lot of places hiring looking for employees to work or because see over here we there are so many job openings there's not in there are more jobs than there are people to fill them yeah. they say in the newspapers but i don't believe in that because mm -hmm. All that bankruptcies and, and all the that, 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 that problems of the companies are, are, how you say, they are not manifested yet. Mm 
mm. because they they you know the the Ministry of Finance and, and all day the the insurance and so on they froze the the thing. But I think in January or so. When they open, then we have a flood of bankruptcies. Yeah. Yes. But here in Malta, it's actually really like this, that uh, in gastronomy, they don't find people. And why is it? Because they only hire or mostly only hire people from Thailand, from whatever, Philippines Africa, from, so, from the yeah. Philippines, and they pay five euros an hour or even less the minimum wage is five euros where you can't, you can't exist with five euros but of yep. course in the beginning then of covid many of these restaurants simply kicked these people out and they said hey, what can we do they didn't get any whatever because they are not residents in malta so they yep. went home so Same. we have now not enough of these workers here. And now the gastronomy has a problem here. We don't find workers. I mean, they should only pay a proper money, then they would yeah. find people. Yeah. But of course, they, they rely on these cheap labor and yeah, there are not enough people yeah. here anymore. You know, you know what I'm, I'm, I would love to ask every socialist or communist, mm. because the big thing, what the socialists say here around, say, if... The, there's good education if there's a good school system mm. everyone can go to the university mm -hmm. so everyone can become a doctor or a mm -hmm. magister oh, yeah, or something okay. yes yes so my question would be so and who will uh wipe the streets who mm -hmm. will work as a waiter or waitress mm -hmm. what is the idea of the socialists if mm -hmm. everyone has an university degree. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Who will be a cook or a waiter? Mm -hmm. Who? So they need, <coughs> I don't know the answer, but in that, if everyone, and you know, since the 1960s, the number of academics raised mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Uh, back then, there were, I think, about 10% academics, mm -hmm. and now are 60 or 50% academics. Yeah. So they need this poor guys from poor countries to make the simple jobs the nurse and and that's yeah. that all and nurses that, garbage that, trucks construction and, sites yeah, yeah, everywhere yeah. They, you yeah. see construction and, sites you see only black people working yeah which you see only black people running after the garbage trucks throwing the garbage away in 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 hospitals you see nurses from whatever yeah. southern or but nothing european anymore it's but clear. I would be interested in the answer. What the, yeah. Because if you think it to the end and say, yeah, yeah, okay, course. everyone is studied now. You, and you, have, you have a degree, but nobody knows how to lay one brick on the other and build the house. You can, yeah. we have too many people designing a house, but nobody who knows should, how to who, put. Yeah. Who should do these jobs? Yeah. Here, here in Malta, it's quite simple. And you hear this, it's a general rule. If you don't go to university, you're considered stupid. Yeah. That's why everybody needs to go to university. Same here, no? Yeah. And you don't, you know, uh, I don't know if you know that, Cody, the European Union, uh, they they invented new kind of degrees, a bachelor's degree yeah. and the master degree and something. You make, I don't know, two years you go to an evening fucking school or something and you get that degree. Mm -hmm. So the, the usual office personnel who was back then working in office or so uh, they get no job because all these guys have these degrees degrees yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah see the the one big point about uh oh i don't know if it's communist socialism is you know they were talking about how great it you know some of these kids i ran across were talking about how great it was because every Everybody, no matter if you worked in a restaurant or if you were a doctor, you would all get paid. Everybody would get paid yeah. the same amount of money. But yet, if you didn't want to go to work that day, you know, you could just stay home and still get paid. Mm -hmm. But yet, you know, you have a doctor, you know, who went to college, mm -hmm. was getting paid the same as somebody who. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. Or, or the teachers and so, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, you just have to think a little kind of logic. Imagine a big factory in the former communist countries, a big factory. 
and everyone gets paid the same. Every worker in this company, in this, fa in this factory, gets the same pay. Mm -hmm. So what is the only possibility, the only way to raise your income? And it's very simple, to work less. Mm. Because if you work less, your income is mm -hmm. the same, when but you work. Same, you work less, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Get that what workers. happened. That what that's yeah. what happened in Hungary and everywhere where mm -hmm. they had that big, that, that big government-run mm -hmm. uh, companies. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. I mean, on the other side, I experienced it. Uh, we we know when Germany was split into Western and Eastern Germany, and we had family in Eastern Germany. So we went there. My mother and my my siblings. We went there. And there was the one, I, I, what, I don't know what, I, how I was related to him now, but he was working as, as a garbage truck driver. And the other one was a professor, but they really had the same income. And then my mom had some shoes and the wife of this professor, you know, in, in Germany would be unthinkable. She saw the shoes and said, oh my, can I try please your shoes? Oh my, these are the first shoes they fit. Can I please have them? You know, they were five-year-old shoes and a, a, a wife of a professor was asking, can I please have these shoes? You know, it would be in Germany yeah. not yeah. thinkable yeah. because I mean, you know, I'm a professor, you know, it's a home. I, and, I and you know, Cody, there, there uh, if you were a, a kind of, of kid, and you like you said in 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 the eastern mm. east Germany, yeah. and you like say I like to I like to become a teacher or I like to study physics or I, I like to do that or this. Mm -hmm. Then they there was a kind of committee. I don't know how was it mm -hmm. called. And they said oh, no no you are you are not allowed to to go to the university. Mm -hmm. You are going to a big farm and become mm -hmm. a, a cow milker or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the government decided what job, what who is allowed to, mm -hmm. and if your family was conformist with the government, mm -hmm. you were allowed to go to the university. Yeah. You had to write the, the das richtige Parteibuch. You had to be in yeah. the, the right. You need communist party. Yeah. yeah. If you are a communist party, then you get support everywhere. Your kids can go to special uh, sports schools and stuff yeah. like this. Yeah. So they were then promoted like, like crazy. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if you're interested in that stuff, Cody. He's but... already falling asleep. <laughs> we need to uh, talk about archery again. <laughs> I, one more thing I thought about last week, because in Germany, there I have no sympathies for them, but I used to check out what they are saying. And this is the kind of Reichsbürger movement. Mm -hmm. They simply said, they say, Germany is not the sovereign state. It's mm -hmm. still under government of the United States and something. Yeah. And and I saw a documentary about the reconnect the reconnection of Eastern Germany and Western Germany in 1990, I think it was mm. 1989 or so. Yeah, something. Yeah. And what is true is that Western Germany had to ask the former allies. The Russians, mm -hmm. the French, the French, the yeah. Americans, yeah. and the English, if it is allowed mm -hmm. to reconnect yeah. the two Germanys. Yeah. So yes. in that sense, they're kind of right. They are right, even if maybe what they do they goes over do it. Yeah. But in, yeah. in, in general, in the base, they are right. I studied a lot of these texts two years ago because it was interesting. Yeah. And there, yeah. there are proof over proof over proof that Germany is not more than a GmbH, as we say. A, yes, a but it's also company. crazy stuff what they say because yeah, that with the GmbH is. But at the end, it's like this: they, they Germany was founded only to manage after war to 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 manage the financial stuff here after war to build up Germany yeah. again. Yeah. It's the Marshall a, the Marshall Plan was part yeah. of it, you yeah. know. On the other hand. You have to say because code is an American. Uh, the Americans protected the Germans from the Russians. Yes, and 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 they defeated Hitler. That's also true. Mm. Yep. yep. Thank you, America. Thank you, America. But I still like what, them. More. <laughs> you know, you know what the leftists hate to hear mm. when I say to them, 
oh, Hitler was not the right wing guy. Mm -hmm. He was a socialist. Mm -hmm. He was a left wing guy because mm -hmm. the name of his party was socialist, mm -hmm. yeah. national socialist yeah. party. NSDAP, yeah, of so he was a socialist, not mm -hmm. the right winger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had more in common with Stalin that, mm -hmm. than with the United States or, or, or free countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I always thought I always thought about uh, trying to find his one uh, one book that he wrote, Von Kampf or whatever mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. Mein Kampf. Have you read it at all, Peter Arman? I, I, I tried to read it, but it's kind of crazy stuff, of course, mm -hmm. and, and you can't read it but uh, they say he become a millionaire just because of his book also because mm -hmm. every couple who married got a, a nice copy of the book and they had to buy it or mm -hmm. i don't know yeah yeah. Don't know. Yeah, yeah 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 and on the other hand uh his ideas were in his days not too far from that communist ideas. The only difference was the socialists allowed private uh, companies and private business and, mm -hmm. and, and that you could own a house or an apartment mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And there was private uh, industry. That was the only difference. But on the other hand, they took the children from you when they were little and put them in different, uh, you know, societies and schools and so on. And, and they were completely, uh, how you call it, indoctrinated. Yeah. So when they are finished, like today, when our children, our school children uh, went out from the school, when they're ready with the school with 15 or 16, they are finished greenish communist socialists. Mm. That's also why the leftists want to lower the election age. Mm -hmm. Because if you are allowed to go to the elections with 16, fresh from school, you are mm. indoctrinated. When you're just allowed with 18, maybe you, <laughs> you mm. think about something. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Is it still in the United States that you are just uh, adult with 22? What's that? Is it still in the United States that you're an you're a real adult with twenty two years of age? Twenty one. Um, Back okay. then it was fully reliable. Fully liable, I think yes, twenty one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. What at age eighteen you can uh, buy tobacco, um, yeah. you can vote, yeah. and buy a, you can buy a rifle. Mm -hmm. And a pistol from a pro in a handgun from a private person, mm -hmm. but then at age 21, you can buy alcohol mm -hmm. and then buy a so I it's it's hard to say. I they've, they've been playing around with the whole age thing for for a while, but yeah, this is the same thing here. They want to try to try to lower the voting age to 16. Yeah, yeah. yeah. same here, same here. Uh, but back then it was 22 because as, uh, shortly ago I saw a documentary about mm -hmm. Elvis Presley mm -hmm. and uh, he got uh, Priscilla, he got to know when she was 14. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how old she was when she, uh, she uh, used to live on Elvis Place in Graceland, Memphis. Mm -hmm. And uh, Elvis had to had to uh, how is it called Versprechen? Promise. Had to promise her her parents that he will marry her when she's twenty two. Mm -hmm. That that was the, the point mm -hmm. why they let her live with okay. him when she was quite young. Oh, Very okay. interesting. Mm -hmm. well, and that, that therefore I know back then it was twenty two mm -hmm. in the sixties. Are you an Elvis Presley fan, Cody? I used to, but not anymore. What's your kind of music? Why not? Oh, I'd have to say the old rock and roll, like, you know, ACDC and oh, Aerosmith. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nice. Ted Nugent, too, or not? Yeah, yeah, I listen to oh. something. Yeah. 
the, the old stuff from Ted Nugent is simply, I was just listening again and it brings back so many memories when I was 15 and I was ahead one of these first Sony Walkmans with yeah. one plug in the ear and I was always listening to Ted Nugent. Intensities, Intensities, his live album is so great. And I was just, I have now Spotify and I was listening to it again. Like, ah, all these memories coming back. You know, it's... He's a kind of nice guy. He was, uh, uh, there's one Joe Rogan show where he was on and he talked about bow hunting because Joe Rogan is a bow hunter too. Mm. You, you used to watch Joe Rogan, Cody? Yeah, I've watched him once or twice when I've gotten time. Mm. So. Nice, really interesting, really interesting. Mm. And he has so many different persons, uh, yeah. you know, one, one, one astrophysicist mm. or, or one CIA guy, one Navy mm. SEAL, one Mike Tyson he had on and so on. And they, they mm. talk so many different things. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I love, I love yeah. the truth. Probably the funniest one I've ever seen was when uh, the Elon Musk was on there smoking pot. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. see that? Yeah, I have seen it. And have you seen it when Alex Jones was on and they gave him, Alex Jones, a lot of whiskey and also pot and so on. Mm -hmm. And Alex Jones ranted around like crazy. I've heard, I've heard about it. I haven't watched that one yet. You mm -hmm. have to watch it. And there was also that, that uh, jiu-jitsu guy. What is his name? A Mexican guy. I don't know. Uh, also a very funny guy, a, a real conspiracy theorist. He's a th theorist. He says space is not true and the earth is flat and something. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? I don't, I'm so stupid. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, names, you know. Yeah. I like this interview recently with Ted Nugent where some guy asked him, if he has a message to all the ones they get their their <laughs> shots and he said yes thank you for the opportunity and i know how to speak to these people i have a message for them <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's a, so you say everybody who got the shot is stupid yep <laughs> and you know back in 2016 and 17 i used to watch alex jones show on youtube mm -hmm. sometimes and they they canceled him totally from YouTube, from everywhere, from Facebook, from everywhere. And that can't be because mm -hmm. everyone sees what he's talking and you, you don't have to believe everything he says. Yeah. But, yeah, but he, when you reach a certain amount of publicity or, or public, yeah. then it's dangerous for them when, yeah. when you know when he, when he has only like me you know my small channel 60,000 subscribers he doesn't do any harm yeah. you know, even if I yeah. would be now the worst conspiracy yeah. theorist ever they don't care but if you have a few million then they start thinking listen I think we need to we need to silence him and you know on the Joe Rogan show Alex Jones said some crazy stuff and Joe Rogan always said uh, his 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 sidekick is Jamie. Jamie, look it up in Google if it's true. Look it up. Yeah. They looked it up, and everything he said was kind of true. Yeah. 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 Here, did you see where uh, Alex Jones went and got a 1911 from? Je I think it was Jesse James. Yeah, didn't see that. The guy that used to build all the hot rods and whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I didn't see that. Uh, once I saw Alex Jones in his show and he threw out the gun and, and uh, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, that story, Cody, from Elvis Presley, he walked into the White House to Richard Nixon with a, with a 1911 as a present for the president. I heard about that, yeah. He walked in with a pistol into the White <laughs> House. <laughs> yeah, you know. You couldn't imagine that today. Yeah. And he was a kind of uh, on a, uh, I don't know, special anti-drug guy mm. for the FBI or something very mm. crazy, very crazy. Yeah. yeah. It makes me wonder how many TVs he destroyed shooting, though. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. mm. wasn't, it, it, wasn't there a story about he got upset with somebody and he was... Shoot his handgun in his bedroom or something? On the television, and yes. Mm -hmm. And to Priscilla, he said, you have to have a handgun in every room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
He was a yeah. But in the, in the old times, it was in the old times it was fun to shoot at a television because with the with the with the thing in it, it was like poof. Now yeah. when you shoot the LCD, nothing is happening. Nothing it's happens. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Was fun in the old times. Yeah, good old times. Uh, yeah, Cody. Yeah. And maybe you'll have to get one of them old TVs and shoot it, Armin. Yeah, most. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if this story is true, but once I read or I heard somewhere that when he was, I don't know. Uh, uh, a kid, Elvis, he liked to get a 22 rifle. Mm -hmm. and, and his mother walked to the, you know, to the hardware store with him, but she bought him a guitar instead of the 22. <laughs> yeah, life changing decisions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He would have become a good hunter otherwise, in, the, in this way, he became yeah. one of the most famous singers yeah. ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, just a second. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. You you simply ignore us today. It's fine. And and uh, I think a lot of people forget back then in these days all these drugs, these these uh, these pills they are taking back then they were not prohibited. It mm -hmm. was legal stuff back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And once I read the story, uh, because he started at the same time with Johnny Cash at the Sun Record label, mm -hmm. label. And uh, they used to go on tour with simple cars. Mm -hmm. So when they, you ever, they, you ever see this, Pete? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Elvis, Elvis, shoot, Elvis shooting yes. a bow and arrow with a, with a girl. Yeah. And uh, so they drove through half of the United States, mm -hmm. and then they got out of the car, went out of the car, and they said, "Oh, I'm." I can't sleep in the car. So they said, mm -hmm. I, we can't sleep in the car. Mm -hmm. So they gave them sleeping pills. Mm -hmm. When they arrived where they should have a concert, they said, oh, we are done from the sleeping, but we can't play. Mm -hmm. And then they gave them the other pills. So mm -hmm. they were turned up. Okay. And, 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 and they changed between these mm -hmm. tranquilizers yeah. and, and the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And also Johnny Cash had this problem. Mm -hmm. For many many years, but they still made good music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm I'm just listening to Elvis, to Johnny Cash, and to Dean Martin because mm. there you never will hear any shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was when I I'm when on I was the young. safe side. <laughs> When I was young, I was listening to Elvis a while, and I could sing even when I because here in Malta there are some kind of a little retro right now so when there's a radio playing you hear either abba or you hear elvis or you yeah. hear some old songs and then of course you still remember the lyrics of the song <laughs> of an elvis yeah. song it's quite interesting but i and you understand every single word he's singing now now i understand yeah when i was young yeah. i didn't understand yeah. what yeah. he was singing yeah, yeah what i didn't know i saw a documentary uh, about abba that they disliked ABBA because they were not, you know, they said they are no artists. And so like with mm. every success, successful, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they disliked them. They're more too mm. much capitalists or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's so stupid. Now, now, Armin, is it is it quite expensive to live in Marca or Malta other than Germany? What's... Oh, it's, it's a little... First of all, it depends where you want to live. We have, of course, very expensive cities where you pay for a small apartment, 2,000 euros a month. And where I live, I pay, let's say, 600 euros. But I still can see the sea from my window, but it's simply a poorer village. And then the life itself is a little cheaper than in Germany, I would say. And the big benefit here, we almost have no winter, so there is no need for for heating for a lot of gas or oil or something so you save money it's it's not that expensive here or what what about like your are you you still have your archery shop no no i sold it i sold it in last november i handed it over to one of my assistants because i wanted to leave malta oh yeah. but yeah. i stuck here because of certain reasons you know well, I, I just I was asking because I seen the video you did. I guess it must have been a year or so ago, or whenever of you in the archery shop. And I'm like, I don't, I had, didn't remember ever seeing. Uh, I guess I never watched many of the videos while you were in the archery shop. So. Yeah, this I had for four years. It was in Valletta, in in the capital. 
there yeah. was a shopping mall and they had an empty shop in the level minus two. And they said, oh, look here, you can have it for a while because we close anyway in a few years. So we yeah. don't take anyone in. You can have it for cheap money and then I have my indoor range and shop there. Yeah. It was nice, it was good times, good memories. That's that's one thing, like the shopping malls here in America are quite, they're dying off. But I mean, the one down the road is damn near empty. All the stores have moved out. And, yep. So. Out, out of town at the suburbs, no? Yeah. Well, yeah. same here. In the in the main streets, the shops are empty. Yeah. And they build outside that bigger uh, malls, yeah. kind of. Like I have things. one. I have one Tai Chi guy. He is, lives in Florida, I think, and he had this idea to take over one of these empty shopping malls and create some kind of a Tai Chi village that you live there and train there. You grow your own food inside. You know, you make a complete uh, self-sufficient. <laughs> yeah, not more than, but more and more. Yeah. yeah. But kind of like this, uh, nice idea. Yeah, I like this idea. It was many of young girls joining. Now the... you start, of course, again. I'm not interested. <laughs> you know, Cody, back then when he was younger, Armin, he used to live with rich women. They bought him Porsche and something. Oh, she wanted <laughs> to buy me a Porsche. And I said, listen, <laughs> my Ford Focus does everything I need. And it only takes a little diesel. A Porsche that I don't need. What, what kind of vehicle do you have, Armin? Hmm? Oh, yeah, have? Different. That was a Ford Focus Ford. I don't know. Oh. Some, some station wagon. Small they're one. Pretty, decent. They're pretty decent vehicles. They are good. Was was nice. This thing didn't use six, seven liters diesel on 100 kilometers. I don't know what it is. Gallon per mile. I have no idea. And it took me everywhere. It was big enough that you could store everything in it. It was a nice car. And I told her, let look, right? <laughs> one, one, one gallon is about four liters, no? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, but they have this this weird, how how long can you drive with one gallon? This, that's why I never get the point. We mm. simply say in 100 kilometers, this car uses up that, that much gasoline. That's why it's always this weird. Yeah. Yeah, pet, petrol, petrol here, gas, I should say, is mm. three, what is this? It's like three thirty nine for the US gallon. Yep. For gallon, yeah, it's not even one dollar per liter. You know, when I drove up to Netherlands through Germany, mm -hmm. one liter of gasoline was about two euros mm -hmm. on the freeway on the autobahn. It was about two euros for one liter, so eight it would euros, be it's about ten dollars. Yeah. It's about eight. Yes, eight, it's eight a, euros. It's kind of like ten dollars, right? Now. Ten dollars for one gallon. Yeah. yeah, crazy, crazy, and it's all taxes, you know, because yeah. the oil price isn't high. Yeah. Mm, it's like this. The only thing I know in America is cubic inches. You know, I'm an old V8. You know, for yeah. me, there's no better engine than a good big block or even a small big, block. Big block. And yeah. then three twenty-five, uh, three twenty-seven is then. 5.4 liters, a 350 cubic inch is 5.7 liters. This is what I still know. You know, this is yeah. these are real cars. This is eight cylinder, nothing beats an eight cylinder. So, Peter, are you still driving the mobile uh, Luminoc uh, vehicle around there with all the stickers? No, because they, they don't pay me anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but I still wear it on my jacket because I have to say, this was kind of the first company they trusted me and paid me for my job and so i'm a kind of thankful guy even if they don't pay me i use it on my jacket because first of all it's a nice product and these are nice guys yeah yeah and, and second of all if you would remove this patch now you would see that it darkened differently because the whole yeah, jacket yeah, is yeah. dark and then you see this yeah, price yeah. Yeah, so you need yeah, to yeah. fill it with something else, otherwise yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I better leave it on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of cool to watch some of these guys that do the, some of these exhibitions, whether they're guns or archery or whatever, mm. and they have all the patches from their sponsors. It's it's really it's really cool. Mm. But you know, we used to say where doves are, there are doves flying in. Mm. So if you have some patches and you can say. 
oh look they pay me for this and that even mm. if it's not true the other company will say oh really yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a kind of trick too yeah of course yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i have no patches nobody's paying me for anything so <laughs> you know uh, when i was in netherlands it was heavy raining and i i had to wear a hat because i was so mm. for some hours and i dislike to wear a hat because of byron mm -hmm. because they say, oh he likes to be like byron ferguson yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's why i don't like to wear a hat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you had to mm. yeah yeah hard life you have such a hard life yeah, <laughs> yeah really really true yeah. but you got some nice photos huh? from from yeah it was a nice photographer mm. and magen uh, hired this guy mm -hmm. A very nice and friendly guy, and he made the, that nice pictures. Yeah. Nice, yeah, very nice. Because he had a very, very good camera, mm -hmm. a very expensive one, so he he could out trick the mm -hmm. bad weather with right. his good yeah, yeah, camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice, well done. God is smiling because he he's modified my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little crazy, I guess. <laughs> uh, it would be not nice to oh say. come on you you thought it was funny peter it it is it is <laughs> you know you... good friends are making pranks to mm -hmm. the other friends yep. and that's to me if i'm making a joke about mm -hmm. my friends it's a kind of sign for friendship yeah for me because a, a, a stupid guy i won't make a joke about him yeah. yeah. Now, and it's all still respectful. You know, even if we make jokes yeah. under each other, it's still yeah. a respect, a basic level of respect there. Yeah. And yeah. this is, I think, is needed. And some simply lost this. Yeah. Not many. But, yeah. But speaking of pictures, though, isn't it like, like with you, Armin? I mean, it's funny how the, you know, those the Chinese sellers are using your photos. To sell their bows, those fletching jigs, you know, on eBay. Yeah. It's just, or, or, or some of the ways that they, you know, like that one picture I, of that girl holding the bow upside down and shoot, it's just, it's like who, you're, you're saying mm -hmm. that they don't have somebody that knows what they're doing to sell this product. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. They, they only sell numbers. They don't care about the product. They simply sell many yeah. of them. But of course, there are a few really good ones there. They know what they are doing. So, well, you know, course. sorry. They, oh, yeah, they did the damn the same damn thing with Lucas Novotny. They were mm -hmm. advertising uh, one of the eBay sellers from China mm -hmm. was um, advertising one of the uh, those PVC takedown horse bows, the little three piece ones, mm -hmm. and they had a picture of Lucas. Yeah, yeah. it's like. They take, they take my photo too, where I stand in full draw and they use it for whatever Olympic archery articles and, and strings. And I wrote them, of course, you don't get even an answer. What, what, what can you do? Yeah. Hire a lawyer for this, you know, and then this company, they close and open next day. Another business is not worth it. One, one photo I made, a, I don't remember the year. I think it was in 2011 or so. Mm. Uh, I made a nice photo shooting with a with a model with the Tanya Baumgartner, mm -hmm. and I was kind of proud about because besides Fred Bear and I think Martin Archery, they had the kind of models for advertising bows back then, and I was I'm really proud because it's true, and that was I think the first one at least in Europe mm. who took back a, a nice beautiful model into bow mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. and all Henry Bodnick did with his kind of models was after my mm -hmm. pictures mm -hmm. and I even saw a kind of Russian company or so used one of these pictures but yeah, yeah. on the other hand I'm, I'm kind of proud about because if they use it it's a nice picture yeah, yeah. and especially it means that you are someone because if you would be a nobody they wouldn't use your photo they used it because of the model, not because okay, of Okay, okay, fine, <laughs> fine. 
Yeah, but they it, use only my photos, you know, because I'm such a super. And model. you know, because there are so many bad pictures of beautiful women with bow and arrow yeah. or on Facebook, yeah. it's you may know it. I mean, it's kind of hard to get them in the right yeah, yeah, yeah. shape. You, they yeah. turn this and that, and yeah. I, I had this. Uh, Even if you're an experienced archer and you mm. can tell them how to handle the bow and the arrow, it's difficult. I had this six, seven Arch years ago. There, there was this show where they always had some models and they let them do these models, some different things. And then there was a voting going on who will be then the best model. And then they asked me if I can, if they can come with three models and I show them how to shoot. So that's how I posted last time the other trailer for this from Venere. So we give our models bow and arrow and let's see what happens. And then because the light was still good, the photographer said, oh, listen, we take our first photos of the models and then you show them how to shoot. I said, no way, they don't <laughs> touch my stuff. I first show them how they hold bow and arrow because otherwise they stand there and look stupid like everyone else. At least they hold the bow kind of decent. So okay. they get a quick introduction and in what they have to do. And then they took the photos and then they turned out quite nicely because at least realistically holding bow and arrow. Yeah. And, and, it, it, and cute girls. I love my job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it's just as bad with our over here with our T with the, the reality TV, because there's one TV show that they're uh, wherever out in the mountains or whatever. Mm. And they were talking about a guy building, um, building a bow out of osage mm -hmm. and yeah. the guy doing the narrator said oh yeah he's he's using some extremely rare osage to build two i'm like <laughs> osage is all over the place i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're you know they're just going towards you know the viewers that have no idea you know how to build yeah. bows or mm. what it's like. uh, the, you know all these television guys even the documentary guys are evil bad people because it's the same they always need the the the, the big uh, a kind of sensation a kind yeah. of uh, big a story thing. and a sensation something yes, needs yes. to happen and, that they build up the tension and whatever yeah. you have, of and ba back then i used to to believe all these documentary filmers but they are the same like the other journalists they, yeah. they're making uh, uh, we say they they put gold on a pile of shit. Mm. Yeah. The documentaries, they invent their own stories and, and yeah. the, the yeah. journalists, they get the story and make something out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, we just have this TV show over here on the History Channel called, uh, I think it was called Top Shot or something, where mm -hmm. every week they had like, okay, this week they're using pistols. Yeah. Next week. Well, anyway, so like, there was one where they were using different bows. And they bring this archery instructor, you know, this guy that supposedly knew he was the instructor for the archery. Mm. And they're shooting um, pretty decent PSE made recurve, one piece recurves. And then the arrows they're shooting are, carb, of course, carbon arrows, which are fine, but they have plastic veins. Mm. And it's like, yeah. you know, and, you know, these guys are drawing them with two fingers. And it's like, what, yeah. you know, mm. they make yeah. no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you this. know, there are also a lot of videos around where they're shooting at armor or so. Mm -hmm. And this was also a, a television documentary. It was called the, the History of Violence, where I shot this gelatin torso. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, this this crossbow said about thousand five hundred or thousand eight hundred pounds of draw mm -hmm. weight, and that. Uh, Andreas Bichler shot with this crossbow at that cuirass at the breastplate, mm -hmm. and there nothing happened. It was donk. Mm -hmm. uh, the the it was a kind of botkin point, mm -hmm. uh, very heavy. Uh, oh, I have one of his. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, crossbow bolt, and uh, there was just a little dent in that in that uh, mm -hmm. uh, cuirass in that yeah. breastplate. I have one of his very mm. massive. Yeah, usually with, with the energy, you need speed and weight. So, of course, they are not so heavy, but they are faster than a normal arrow. So, they, they should have the same. See, they are made of, they are made of, of uh, uh, oak. And mm -hmm. look, mm -hmm. look how, how yeah. thick. Nice. With, with, with uh, wooden fletching. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he gave me one of those, and this is was kind of this kind of point. I think it has to have about three hundred grains a point mm. alone. Yeah, yeah. nice bullet, <laughs> <laughs> but it bounced off. Ping! Nothing yeah. happened. Nothing happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And because you said it with that, with that, uh, how you called it, that, 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 uh, no, that slots where they glued in the feathers and it's made, he's made the same. It's yeah. a kind of slot inside and a little yeah. twisted, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? Yeah. So he gets them. Yeah, nice. It's like that on the crossbow. Yeah. But I would like to shoot one of these. <laughs> yeah. Dunk. You know, it makes it doesn't make here, <laughs> here you can see it here where yeah. it runs into the yeah, left, you see? I see. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. Good good craftsmanship always impresses me. And it's kind of tapered here to mm -hmm. the end, you see? Yeah. yeah. It gets thinner and flat on the sides. Mm -hmm. So very sophisticated arrow, bolt, you mm. have to say. And I, li I like how he built it with a little bit of heel curl in those yeah. wind, uh, in the yeah, wind. Yeah. But they start slightly yeah. with him heel again. But why does he have flat sides at the end to put it easier? That he has I more? don't know. I don't know. You see, it it it, yeah. it, it gets mm. a smaller yeah, diameter. The taper is fine, but at the end, these two flat parts on the side, it's not like a knock unit that don't need to knock. Yeah, it. yeah. yeah, yeah. It I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe because the string has a certain and that eh, we never know. I don't know. And it, these are strings thick yeah. like like the shaft. Yeah, these are course. massive strings. Mm -hmm. yep. mm. <laughs> nice stuff. <laughs> yeah. Every projectile, every diesel is nice. <laughs> yes, everything. The best, was... bet, the best you showed was still the vaccinate arrow. I can't help Vax you. I have it out. <laughs> you have seen it, Cody? Oh uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, have you ran around and shot anybody in the ass with it yet? Of course, yes. Every day I walk out at night and vaccinate the un unwilling people. Mm. <laughs> you are, so you're doing the good for the neighborhood, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, they love me. <laughs> <laughs> and soon he starts selling ketchup coffee, then he's, uh, then they, they all, well, they may make him the president <laughs> of Austria then. Uh, yeah. Uh, we oh, yeah. heard uh, we heard they're calling you the peeping Peter. The peeking? Peeping. Pee -pee. Like peeping Tom. But yeah. If uh, they are stuttering, they pee 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 Peter. <laughs> <laughs> pew pew Peter. Peter. <laughs> Peter. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun talking to you. Mm, yeah. Kill this. Did I, did I, I show you is this one? Oh yeah, we oui. wow, pretty. This I, old uh, this old seventies uh, bear archery target compound. Mm -hmm. A lot of cables. No? Mm, yeah, the sights and a lot of stuff on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Poundage, sixty. Uh, I think it's currently at forty. Forty on okay. And uh, has it? Has it kind of brackets like the bear custom takedown? Yeah, yep, it's mm -hmm. but there's bolts instead of the latch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yep. But and the clicker and the stuff and everything. Bow sling and everything. Yeah. All you need for being a good archer. Yeah. So but I shot it uh I shot it last night at about 10 yards. Mm-hmm. And I was stacking arrows next to each other. So mm -hmm. I'm going to hopefully do a video. I'm going to make a small video either maybe tonight or mm -hmm. sometime this weekend. I'll mess around and make a video. Nice. Uh, and are you using the sight when you're shooting it? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I, be, I wanted to try it. And mm. It's, I mean, it's dead on so far 10 yards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, it's so weird with the sight when you're not used to it. My God, yeah. I was struggling when I was when I moved to Mallorca. It's a small island and a, a Spanish island. And when I read that somebody offers archery courses there, 
that, okay, I need to visit them. I need to see what they are doing because I was thinking about doing archery in Mallorca. So I went there and there was a guy, he has his finger and in one of his pebble roads, he set up then the target and he brought an Olympic recurve with the sight. And then he explained me how to shoot, but he never shot an arrow. So he only showed me how to do it. And then I did it first and was aiming through this thing and I missed, I was not able. And then he went a little away and me like, okay, now I shoot instinctive I can what I said, bam, bam, bam. Why do you shoot so fast? I said, look, because I hit the target now. <laughs> and then three center shots, he's like, oh, what? <laughs> my, um, one of my favorite things is when I go to like some of the, what we call big box stores, like our best pro shop or mm -hmm. Cabela's or whatever. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing is to go in there and go to the archery department mm -hmm. because most of the people that, you know, they don't really, most of the people, I mean, you'll get some that know some stuff about archery, but most of the people that work there, they just there to work. Mm -hmm. So I go to the archery department and I'll look at all the compounds and they'll, somebody come over and ask me, oh, can I help you? Yeah, I want to try to shoot that recurve up there. So they get it down and they're looking at it and trying to figure out how to string it and <laughs> Um, so I just go along with it, and then finally they'll get them strung, and <clears throat> I said, well, this is my first time shooting, mm -hmm. and I walk up to the target, and I put three or four arrows right next to each other, and I'm like, oh, I guess I was better than I thought I was, and hand it back to them and walk away. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Have you a nice Saturday afternoon fun, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. So. But, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it once, and uh, it was a kind of archery school. And they didn't know me. And so I said, oh, let me try one mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, it was fun too. Mm -hmm. yeah. It happened to me on one of these medieval fairs we had in Regensburg. There was a small archery stand. And they had this, this, this foam apple hanging there and some, some beat up recurve bow. And then this girl tried to explain how to shoot. And I was listening. And I was like, ah, so you mean like this? Boom. <laughs> and I shot the apple. Oh, you shot before? I said, yeah, maybe one, two arrows. <laughs> it's fun you know but you know i was young and you know like like you now this is like you know because you talked about shooting a compound bow and so and we started when we started to do our 3d tournaments uh, there were also some compound shooters and you know that self bow guys and traditional guys mm. dislike them because they mm. the, the compound bow the traditional, yeah? mm. and uh, and i as long as i was the president of that archery club for 20 years I always let them shoot because why not? Yeah, we and, they all, and they always said, yes, they need so much time to aim and to mm -hmm. get ready to shoot. And then I always said, yes, but they don't need much time to look for the arrows. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. your self bow shooters. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. yeah. yeah and we I have to say, all the compound bow shooters over here, I don't know how it is in the United States. They are well, good sportsmen. Mm -hmm. they, they know the rules. Mm -hmm. They they had more idea about archery than a lot of the self bow and traditional shooters mm. because they have to know because they have a highly sophisticated device, so they have to know. Mm. And Cody, we used to make one joke. You know, there were groups about four, five to six persons. And, you know, at each target, one group started. And if we had in the group before our group, a compound shoot or two, we used to have one of these little blackened screws in our <laughs> pocket. <laughs> and so they walked to the next target. Hey, guys, is maybe... Is this screw <laughs> one of your bows? Oh man, they look. Oh, oh, my where's, God. The, where's the screw missing? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna steal that. I'm gonna have to try that. Yeah, you have to have some some. Uh, how are they called? Hex nut or how are they called? Yeah, not hex nut. How are they called, Mister Imbus? The Allen key. Yeah, Allen key. Allen key. Yes, yeah, some of these small black screws you have to have in your pocket, and then you say, Hey, it's one of yours. <laughs> we found or, it at the target. <laughs> yeah. Either that, either that, or get one of the what we call the little Jesus clips. 
that go on up here that hold the pins in for the cams. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, hey, did you lose this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no, the the plan the plan with this uh, bear take or not take down, but the bear Tamberlane target mm -hmm. bow is. Uh, I thought about shooting it, making up a set of arrows. And going to try to shoot what we, we call a 300 round, where you have a target face mm -hmm. and the maximum point you can get is uh, 300. Okay. And just to go see what these guys, you know, some of these other yeah. big fancy compound guys would say with me showing up with something from like 1970. And, mm -hmm. But no, I mean, they might, might take it better than, you know. They, they did the job too 50 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a problem. <clears throat> it's I started Archer with an with a Jennings compound bow. And it was called T Star Two. You could you could adjust it from I think from forty to seventy pounds. It was mm -hmm. a wide range. You can adjust the bow for draw weight and so mm -hmm. nice bow. The thing so, is, compound bows didn't make archery better; they made it easier. Now, what, what here, and popular, popular. Yeah, popular, yeah, of course. Now, here's a question for you guys maybe a little insight, maybe from you guys and some of the guys, viewers that see this. I thought about maybe since I got a kind of chronograph and I thought about maybe starting to do vintage compound bow reviews where I that's a pretty, pretty good idea, yes, great idea, yep, and. And not necessarily for the speed, but you know, find old article or old ads, and maybe yeah, 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 yeah. and just play around with it. Just uh, exactly, yeah. Bit of the history yeah. of the bow and how it shoots, yeah. how it feels, even after fifty years, and whatever what the yeah. feeling is. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah. And like we talked in the last show, it to me it's a kind of nice feeling if I have one of these old compound bows and shoot yes. them. It's yeah. very nice. And yep. it's, it's nice and it can even start and kindle a revival that people really go to these flea markets and, and get yeah. an old yeah. bow and yeah. Yeah. not only I would need to have the newest and the best and whatever that they really like, like you buy an old car. You know, why do people buy old timer cars? Because yeah. it's simply different. They have a character. They, they are you, whatever you feel different. Yeah, that's yeah. it's interesting. If I would have these bows here, I would do all these vintage bow reviews, obviously. Yeah. Yep. Because Honestly, the old the old compounds, just like the old recurves, they were built. They were all basically handmade. Like you yeah. know, like you know, the Allen compounds were all handmade for quite a while. Yeah. And yeah. Yep. I mean, yep. and of course, in eBay, I mean, over here they're just full of old compounds that are. Mm. Uh, yep. But should I limit myself to like maybe have a cutoff of like, like 1990, not like 85 and older? Because yep. what was, I think the compound started in like the late 66 or 65. Yep. yep. Something like this. Yeah. But, but yeah, I thought, I thought about playing around with that ideal just to yeah. start. Yep. Great yep. idea. Good so, idea. Yep. It's, I think it's even for me it would be interesting because these old bows, I said, they have way more character and, and way more thing and, to and, it. So and also you give a kind of credit to the old companies, yeah, which made wonderful products, yeah. really high quality products, mm -hmm. and, and 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 early on and so mm -hmm. nice idea. And all these early inventions, you know, what they came up with and then tested yeah. and figured out. Yeah. I mean, this is pioneer's work. Cody, do you know when they really started with the with the release using with oh. the compound bows? I know that Frank Eicholz even uh, experimented with the recurse bows with kind of hand with simple devices. Yeah, with this yeah, rotating thing. Yeah, easy. yeah, yeah. But for the compounds, I would I wouldn't have a slightest clue when they started using the release with the compound. So I think when they got shorter and shorter, no, maybe. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then they pinch the fingers and they realize they need to do something. Yeah. I have one of these old uh, releases, which is like a pl pliers or pliers yeah, yeah, yeah. with a with a trigger. And mm -hmm. I tried to shoot the recurve and the longbow with mm -hmm. it, but man, you get a kick. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but 
and of course, you know, then you had the, you know, in the mid eighties where guys had, you know, they were shooting real heavy bows and they had overdraws and shooting little 14, yeah. Yeah. 14 and 15 inch arrows and trying to make them shoot as fast as they could. Uh, mm. Yes, they had very long overdraw rails on yeah. the compound bows. Yeah. Mm. Just, uh, did they also try this with, uh, with recurve bows? I don't know. Yeah, there were some recurves that had overdraws on them. Mm -hmm. so, one old target archer that I know uh, that lives down in Ohio, he actually made a, took one of his recurves, one of his target bows, and made his own overdraw on it mm -hmm. because he claim it shot better. But I, I don't know. I just I never really cared for the overdraw thing. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Because uh, in my opinion, well, for what I'm doing, I like a heavy and a heavy arrow. Mm. So, if you shot the arrow, yeah, it's not so, heavy uh, enough. My, I'm, I'm kind of proud. When I was in the Netherlands, I showed uh, again my legacy Eastern legacy aluminum arrows, like Byron's. Are. Yeah. I made me a set of some, and today he posted a set of Eastern legacy aluminum arrows and, and all the oh, why alum, aluminum with the longbow and so. Mm -hmm. they're nice yeah uh, yeah and my one thing about the overdraw is so if your hand is right here the yeah. overdraw would be way back here and i never liked the idea of the yeah, yeah. the broad head or the, because if yep. the, the bowstring broke or whatever yep. i mean yep an arrow in, would. in some of that old howard hill movies i saw uh even howard had uh kind of arrows he draw completely on the shelf so mm -hmm. the arrow point was on the shelf yeah target arrows of course mm -hmm. also yeah, in, in in asiatic archery they have this too in 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 korea and in turkey it's like a half pipe like if you cut the bamboo yeah, yeah. and then you yeah. wrap it around your finger and then you put the, a very short arrow a baby arrow in it this this half pipe is on on the riser and then you draw this very short arrow back which of course the tip is here and your hand is over there and then you let go and it happened to one of my friends in Austria he's a relatively experienced archer he shot this Korean bow and this thing came off while he shot and went through his yeah, hand yeah 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 horrible so I don't like to have the point behind my hand you know and no I think way. I think also the Turkish had the kind of device as the sepa, yeah the small sepa. one the sepa yeah, where you yeah. only overdraw a little yes yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talked about in the past. I never found out the reason for this idea. You said because the air, the, the enemy couldn't shoot the arrows back, and so I when they know. shoot short arrows, yeah, they are lightweight, and I don't know. I don't know. I should. I don't know. Well, it has a purpose that they did it in Korea and in Turkey, so it has a reason. It has its. On the other hand, as we talked before, maybe they just experimented with, and it was not that common. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like shooting short arrows because it's, oh. I don't like to have the tip behind my hand. Yeah, I mean, but and you only can do it with with kind of botkin or 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 target. Of course, points. you can't have broadheads on it. Yeah. 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 Mm. Well, I, I don't know how long ago it was, but I remember reading in an old history book or archery history book or whatever that was, I guess, published. Here in the states and the hell i don't even remember what the name of it was but they were talking about over wherever in hungary or wherever that they came up with an arrow that you could that they could shoot but the enemy couldn't shoot it back because it was some what what was it armin was it the knock they, they didn't it? have a knock at the end they simply had a small cone like when you Oh, only, yeah. you leave only the cone and they had a small metal ring in yeah. the string yeah so they yeah. hooked up this small cone in the metal ring shot the arrow and when the enemy picked up the arrow there was no knock on it so they couldn't knock it on the ball i even i don't know if i think i read it somewhere uh, that they had uh, kind of arrows which had a an edge in the knock so mm -hmm. if you shoot it with a user usual bowstring, you would cut your own bowstring, and mm -hmm. they had a kind of device on the on the string. Okay. So mm -hmm. their string won't be cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they all had it's this. The, it's the same. You don't know about the old books. 
Yeah. But you know, it's like in nowadays with 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 all the military industry. You know, they always invent something new to trick yeah. the enemy. So in this time, yeah. they did it like this. They had even the returning arrow. That they said, if yeah, the enemy yeah, stands in my line, then they shoot the arrow and it turns 180 degrees and flies back, only to freak him out, not to kill anyone, only to the arrow comes back to him. So and you know what? You know what, Armin? You have to think about military tactics yeah. and military uh, 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 intelligence. Mm. Even if they have just one arrow with this blade in the knock mm -hmm. and they sh and the kind of spy, an agent, shows mm -hmm. it to the enemy, yeah. I say, look, they have arrows like this, and they have only one. Yeah. So the, uh, the 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 combatants will hesitate to pick up an arrow. Yeah, of course. They, they, oh, I don't take these arrows. So mm -hmm. you you never know what is the story behind. Of course not. If you find one arrow with this device, mm -hmm. you don't know if, if it was there ever are hundred or only one. Of course. Yeah, not. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Armin, did you ever hear about this? This is something else I heard where. On the back of the knot, were were on the arrow on the back behind the feathers. Instead of having a knock, there was like a cutout groove where they pushed the arrow on. So the bowstring sat in the center of the arrow shaft, and they pulled back, and it was like slanted just so when you let go, it would come off the off the string. That was something else I heard or read in an old book. It was some weird. I don't like, understand how completely how it should look like. So, yeah, I, I'll see if I can find the. Uh, um, yeah, when you find it. Tell it again. What? How was it? It was. Okay, so yeah, you had the arrow, and right behind the cock feather. Yeah. There, there was a groove like a knock, but it was cut. It just in the like side. That, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. I read it a long there time. Were, there were arrows they called them Pathfinder arrows or the, the, the Switzerland arrow, but usually they had this groove in front of the cock feather. Yeah. Put a rope around when you when your bow broke, let's say, and you still have the string, then you can wrap the string around and you have the string in your hand. You hold the arrow and then you can throw the arrow away like with an adl adl. So that was mm -hmm. called a Pathfinder arrow. You so know that's what? why they had this groove there. You know what I could imagine, Cody, because yeah. you're saying this, maybe you could knock faster because you can lay the string on the shaft and then slip in. If you have a knock like that, you have to set it very precisely on the string. But if you have like that, you told exactly. us, yeah. you can slide the shaft down the string and you mm -hmm. maybe you or you, I don't know, maybe. I mean, that makes makes maybe sense even uh, to have a sideways knock, not a back. Yes, knock. you push the arrow against the yeah. string and it will knock, so you don't have to be very right precise. Back and then it goes in and you let go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would so be you worth testing. If you find a photo or some or a, a drawing or something, or when you description, would be interesting. It's, these things I like to experiment. Yeah. Yeah. But did this arrow still have a knock or not? No. Okay, so then you knocked the, the string in the groove. Okay, just plant in the end, and then that one yep. slip. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. yeah. Why not? Yeah. So. Armin, do you know what this is? At, at the Korean arrow, that black stuff here. Yeah. It's, usually they had the whipping around it for that it doesn't like, break. Maybe it's like it. It looks like on that old fly rods, you know, a kind mm. of. A kind of uh, yarn with with lacquer on it. Yeah, yeah, it's normally they use silk to reinforce the wood and the connection. And yeah. Stuff. yeah, but it's like the same here. Maybe it's just painted. Yeah, yeah, and then they paint it, of course. Yeah, Koreans, they knew exactly what they are doing. I need to send off all my feathers, two of my arrows, because when you shoot bare hand, then you don't scratch your hand anymore. And even the the arrow slap when you shoot thumb release. Sometimes the end of the arrow slaps a little the bow. You know, I kind of did it when I used that that Italian fletching cheek, that metal with the okay. straight clamp. Mm -hmm. I, I had a, a sandpaper glued on the board mm -hmm. and I, I wrapped the, the feather with the clamp. Yes. So mm -hmm. I sanded it down the, the quill a little. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. now, I thought that you only simply sand the side of the quill down once it's glued on. Yeah. And back then, Cody may know it, they used to strip the feathers 
and they put it into hot water and and pull off the hide with the fledge and they let the quill they don't cut the quill you understand mm -hmm. yeah and it, it curls up of course yeah. but then they made it straight and put yeah. it into the clamp so you have no quill on it yeah makes sense yeah. feather stripping yeah. they call I, it mm -hmm. yeah i used to strip the feathers turkey feathers like that and you know with the little membrane on the bottom yeah you, you could you could make some really good spiral flu flus because it was just yeah yeah because <laughs> they, yeah. Yep. So, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. When I first started out shoot, when I first started out making arrows, I use that's what I would do is I would strip the feather right off the quill, mm -hmm. cut them, and because I of course I didn't like the quill going over my hand when I was shooting the uh, the yep. homemade uh, homemade wood bows, but and I still I mean I still if I if still to this day I kind of do that too I'll strip them and mm -hmm. uh, yep. but, so but. yeah. I I for usually I use a you know that carpet knife and and, and cut it mm -hmm. here and put on a, a drop of glue and so it's exactly. very smooth you can't yeah. hurt yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now one thing talking about knockless arrows I've been I can't wait to see the um, video showing how Jeff was shooting the knockless arrows out of that compound that has me kind of intrigued. Yeah. Did you see that video, Armin? Uh, compound, I think I saw it, but I, it's a little hard to see because he shows first a knockless arrow, then he turns around, and then the arrow is already knocked, kind of, and it's on, I don't know, so you can't see it really properly, so I don't know. But yeah. it can happen, but I don't think that a compound bow is a proper tool for shooting knockless arrows. Yeah, I've been, I asked him, I was, I asked him about showing a video and he said he was working on it, mm. showing how to do it. And yeah. I'm kind of inter, I'm interested, I'd be, and that's kind of cool to see mm. how he does it. So. Of course. Yeah. It's always interesting. He's, I mean, yeah. he's, he's, you know, going into a complete other direction and, and testing okay. and doing stuff. So this is interesting. Yep. Cody, have you ever seen uh, that, that device, what the, uh, the the field surgeons had in the Middle Ages, and I don't know, maybe after also, to remove an, a barbed arrow from from the body. Uh, no, I don't know. They had kind of two rails. Yeah. Let's say the arrow was like that in in the body, and yeah. so they put kind of two two steel rails through the wound mm -hmm. so that that i don't know i call it rail so that comes over the barb mm -hmm. so on, on both sides a, a, a small sheet of metal mm -hmm. a kind of v-shape they they slid into the wound and so it comes came over the barbs mm -hmm. and then they could draw out yeah, yeah. the arrow without mm -hmm. Doing more damage. Taking too much flesh mm -hmm. <laughs> out of your body. But you but only need to find the orientation when you don't see yeah. how the blade looks yeah, like. Yeah, they, they kind of, in German days, okay, they, they put it in and then they turn around and see. They had a kind of sound, then the kind of, of wire they slid in, and so they 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 felt where the barbs are, and mm -hmm. then they, they slid it in, they slid in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, once I read uh, from a surgeon, from a doctor, from I think from the U.S. Cavalry, which fought the Indians, mm -hmm. and he said when a guy was hit by a bullet, he fought on. Mm -hmm. But if he was hit by an arrow and the arrow was sticking out of his body, he mm -hmm. immediately stopped mm -hmm. fighting <laughs> because he realized even if if he was not wounded too bad. Yeah. Uh, he realized there's something really wrong now. Yeah, psychological. And if you have a kind of, you know, that old lead bullets from that muscle loaders inside, yeah. you fight on maybe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. The psycholog the yeah. psychologist, or how is it called? Psychological. Yeah. Psychologically, mm. uh, yeah, damage the arrows. Yeah, yeah. Make of course. The, yeah. yeah. What, what I always find funny is, but of course, I don't know if it's true or not, where 
you know, on the West, like the Westerns, John Wayne and whatever, where somebody gets shot with an arrow and they run off, run up and they just break it off and keep on. I mean, I, oh. I think I think they did it because if if you have if you don't break it off, of course it will hurt and so on. Yeah. But you have a big lever here, so yeah. every little movement will hurt you more and yeah. more. And and maybe they they brought it cuts inside. So mm -hmm. if you break it off, I don't know. It cuts only once and then it's fine. Yeah. When you cut through some some arteries and you you would pull it out, then maybe you bleed to death. Yeah. So you leave it in, continue fighting, and then you go somewhere and let get fixed up. Yeah. Maybe. Not not that I'd want to get shot by any broadhead or any arrow. Mm -hmm. but I mean, like that medieval one that you were just showing. Mm -hmm. uh, that 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 would just be. Mm. Uh, that was. Or, a or even some of the Japanese broad, or was it the Japanese or the Chinese broadheads? Look, that look, at, that, really weird. That's very look weird. at that one. Yeah. I think it has. How will I you get know. this one out of a body anymore? <laughs> Just with that method I, I told you. With two. You, you push it through, of, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you would think, though, if, if they weren't wearing any armor, you know, shooting out of, you know, 175 pound bow or so mm. you would think something like that would completely blow through a person though yep. I think so. they, what i know for sure and i saw a nice nice talk about it in an i think in an english museum where they the subject of, of the whole of that museum was that that war of roses that hundred years war between mm -hmm. the french and the english and they said they don't shoot at the bodies and so they just shot into the open visor if the visor was open mm. or in the joints and yeah. they shot don't shoot long range like in the movies mm. but they shot very straight from about maybe 40 meters into mm -hmm. the battle mm -hmm. like snipers would do mm -hmm. yeah. well i remember uh remember reading someplace uh fred barry used to put on like a a thing down when he was putting on sports shows where they'd have like a a sandbag of that was a basket a basket i think with with sand and the gas behind yeah yeah and yeah. then they would shoot into it with a like a hunting rifle and the bullet wouldn't even cur you know completely go through where yeah. it was shooting a 60 pound re or you know whatever longbow or recurve with a field point and blow right through and yep yep, yep. Uh, one once we had the kind of bow hunting school uh, and we uh, in the evening we were drunk a little and so and of course we put out the broadheads and so and there was a big barrel uh, you know an oil barrel a 400 liter or so a big mm -hmm. barrel with a very thick uh, tin mm -hmm. very thick and some of the broadheads went through the first mm -hmm. tin and stuck out a little on the other side of the barrel. So yeah. there's a lot of penetration power. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I remember um, I remember one time when I was over uh, spending some time with uh, Jim Belcher. He was yeah. showing me a video of uh, a bow that he made for Simon uh, Stanley. Mm -hmm. And it was like a hundred, I, I think it was a, it was a hundred and thirty or between a hundred and thirty and a hundred and fifty some pound. Mm -hmm. uh, recurve that he built for Simon and he was showing me some video they were shooting and I don't I can't remember the distance maybe 50 60 yards and uh, Simon uh, was shooting in an oil drum and they yep. from that distance they blew that a uh, few uh, uh, just a regular steel blunt through both sides of that uh, yep. Yep. steel drum mm -hmm. yep. it was, yes yeah, but but in the in, in warfare in these medieval battles, also the armory was very good. They yeah. don't shot through. Yeah. I, I I wouldn't want to get hit by one of those though. No, 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 no way in hell. Yeah. Oh, gives me nightmares just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. What's very interesting with bow hunting is, if you're hunting small game like pheasant or turkeys or, or smaller birds or rabbits or so you don't have as much penetration as if you hunt big game because 
the 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 body absorbs a the lot mass, of, 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 of the right. mass you know it was pushed away a little and so and you shoot a small have... water bottle you push it with you you shoot a big it stays there yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah yeah that's why it's always that's why many shoot then these rubber blunts when they shoot a, a rabbit or something you knock yeah, him when, out when i was hunting rabbits in in idaho with Ned Steen, he shot a rubber plant arrow one like i think i have no a usual rubber plant yeah where i have one i don't know completely through the rabbit yeah. so yeah. that rabbit had two holes of that size i think there was nothing yeah. inside left <laughs> and one the... one he didn't shot completely through but the arrow stick like that through mm -hmm. yeah. and the arrow and the rabbit like wanted to to flee in the hole but no, he couldn't, couldn't get it. <laughs> <It's stuck. laughs> no, I had when I when I started here in Malta with my archery range, I had an assistant, and he was a martial artist. He did whatever, whatever, and in jutsu stuff. And then I got these rubber blunt tips for the arrows. And then he said, "Listen, shoot my arm." I said, "No, I don't shoot your arm." Yes, I want you to shoot my arm. And I only used a twenty-two pound snake bow at a distance of five six meters and shot his arm. It didn't cause. Uh, that the thing oh. went in, but he couldn't move his arm for two weeks. Yeah, it was completely paralyzed. <laughs> I said, so "Look, so what you get, you idiot." <laughs> when I when I used to give archery lessons in schools in Vienna, yeah, and in this uh, gym halls or how you mm -hmm. call Turnzaal, uh, they had the kind of ceiling with this, uh, you know, wooden boards, you know, noodle mm -hmm. and feather boards, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I talked to the children in the first lesson and, and I showed them the different arrows like, like mm -hmm. I showed them mm -hmm. to you. And then I took out this one. I said, <laughs> and look, friends, this is the most harmless arrow of them mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And then I shot from that, that, that whole distance on to that wooden ceiling and went, mm -hmm. boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a dangerous thing even that one this yeah. soft guy yeah yeah um, yeah i think three hours guys huh shall we call it a day wow. for today yeah. yeah has it been three hours already yeah almost it's 10 now in here so we started at seven ish yeah. so it's three hours okay. around okay we yeah. should Four we have a lot to talk more so we we will simply bring you in very yeah. soon again huh yeah of course no problem if you like it you like to be in our show and you you have a lot of knowledge i said so always yeah. nice to talk and you see it doesn't have to be scripted you don't need to have any topics they they yeah. simply develop while we we talk yeah. it's interesting yeah. i like it next week we will have byron ferguson on the show yep and he is has kind of interesting news because his uh, his uh, become the arrow book will be published newly okay. and with a lot of new stuff inside also nice. of his travels and nice no new new mm -hmm. old pictures and so on mm -hmm. i'm i'm looking yeah. forward to that will, will you do the german version then again maybe i have to i don't know it it yeah. don't so good. didn't sell that good it's it's but an american it thing was, yeah it was because of that you know nice austrian publisher yeah yeah of course yeah 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 well, i understand you know him yeah make sure to give byron my best and tell him i say hello yes of course and and we will also say that you gave us his greetings yeah yeah, because yeah, you yeah. Met him. of course <laughs> of course of course no problem uh, and ne next time maybe but you know we talked about i don't like to surprise him next yeah. time we talk yeah. to him and and we can be yeah. we make a make a quadruple <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah we'd be nice too when yeah. it's only about hunting and i can go sleeping it's fine <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah it's fine okay okay yeah. thank you very much cody for your time Good thank night. you peter okay. and thank, thank you guys you. for watching all the way through it was i think it was again very interesting yeah. so it's subscribe, always worth it. subscribe, yeah. subscribe like. share our video, like it, write in the comments. If you even know this one arrow Peter showed where it's from, it's from China or from Indonesia or from yeah. Timbuktu, yeah. 
let us know if you know something. If you have questions, even questions to Cody, write them in the comments and we will ask Cody next time about your questions. Yes. Right. All so the best then, to Michigan. Yes. All the best to everywhere. Everybody who is watching, I wish you all the best. Good night, guys. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Have a nice one. Yeah, bye, bye. Bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you very much.